<laughs> you all good? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Yeah, all good, man. All good. Thank you. All good. Garage is looking top there, bud. Well, I haven't got a room in the house that looks pretty on camera, so I spent ages setting this up just to be late for your podcast. So sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no worries at all. No worries at all. I've I've done it before. I um I had a um. Do, did you know uh, Reese Law- Laurie? Um. Uh. Oh God. Was he on your podcast a while back? Yeah, yeah. He's just been on the yeah. podcast. Yeah, um, the latest one. Yeah, tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow, Rider. Sorry, Reese. I totally yeah. forgot. Um, yeah. Um. I totally forgot the pod. I was out walking the dog, and he phoned me, and he was like, "Um, are we doing the podcast tonight?" I was like, "Oh shit." <laughs> I've done loads of these and the standard time seems to be half past seven. That's so I was like, yeah, right. yeah, I've got ages. And then oh, I have these texts. Yeah, sorry, mate. Anyway, we're here now. Yeah, yeah no here, problem here at all. Garage. I've got lights on, everything's set up. I've got a beer, mate. Happy I know days. You like your beer. Look at this. Definitely. Shall we, shall we crack these open now then? What's that you've got? I've got a... Uh, I did, I've already cracked it. It's a, it's a Hazy Jane guava brew doggy thing. Guava? Ooh, guava. look I'll, at I'll him. Tell you, I'll tell you, Bruce, I asked my wife, my, my lovely wife, so can you just grab me some beers? And yeah. she knew that this is being filmed. So every beer can I've got is fruity and pink. Brilliant. Uh, just, <laughs> just so it looks nice. <laughs> I've got a pinky. I've got a pinky one. Oh, I one of them. Big fan. Big fan. Right. I'll crack this one open. Um, mate, if you don't mind, I just want to give uh, a little toast in memory of young Chrissy Rouse. So, yeah, um, yeah. Chrissy, please, Chrissy, it was an absolute pleasure to know you, pal. And uh, Dom and the rest of Chrissy's family, thinking of you. Here's to you. See you. Right. Okay, then. Let's get on with this. Ollie, how the hey. hell do you not have like 8 million subscribers on your channel? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, buddy. You it's, tell I'm, me. I'm not blowing smoke up. Well, I am blowing smoke up your ass, but it's <laughs> it's it's justified. You've got a bloody good channel. It's cracking. I appreciate that, mate. Thanks very much. Yeah, mate, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why it's not got loads. I mean, I'm I'm not fussed either way, but I don't know why it has or hasn't got loads of subscribers. It's got it's got to be because I'm looking into it at the moment, trying to trying to sort of boost my channel on. It's got to be down to your titles and your thumbnails. Has to be. There's, there's, yeah. there's just there's maybe, just no other way. I don't push out a lot of content all the time, so maybe maybe I'm falling off the algorithms. I don't know, but see, I'm I think. I think that used to be the case where you had to be chucking out at one stage, you had to chuck out at least twice a week and then they wanted you to be chucking out at least once a week. But I think now what they say is as long as when you put a video out, as long as it, it gets picked up by people, when you put the video out, then they'll just, they'll just chuck it out to anyone that they think is going to be interested in it. Um, well, certainly it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't harm chucking out more videos for sure. But then, you know, you've you got a family, you've got a job, so you, you do what you can do, don't you? I'm a busy boy, as we're going to talk about. Yeah, I'd like <laughs> to stick I'd like to stick more videos out. But as as you well know, mate, it takes a long time doing this editing, doesn't it? Not this that, is meant as a bleak, but it, it just takes a while. So when, when work does. gets in the way, that has to come first. Because unfortunately, the, the grown-up stuff, it pays the mortgage and all that. So Well, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that bit. We'll cover yeah, that yeah. very I'm shortly. Let you see it. I've got no idea how this podcast is going to go. Like I said uh, in that post, normally I get a heads up. I will sort of talk about this. You've just sent me in. Cole, there you go, mate. Yeah. We'll have a chat. So Because all this podcast is, mate, is is imagine us sitting down the pub, having a couple of beers and a chat. That That's all it is. It's just us chatting about whatever comes up really you know we've got i've got questions in social media and across on my patreon which we we can run through but um yeah essentially it's just us having a chat um folks folks if you're listening if you're watching forget the rest of this podcast get onto youtube and type in <laughs> ollie o-l-l-i-e space moto m-o-t-o ollie moto check it in have a look at the full hd uh, playlist. In fact, there's loads of playlists. I haven't even got around to your Nepal stuff or any of that yet because I binge watched the whole full HD. It was amazing. Um, and just like you'll watch, you'll you will watch the first minute, two minutes of the full HD, and I guarantee you'll sub. It's awesome. So get yourself along. Right. Okay. That's oh, me thanks, lost mate, all my listeners. Fine. I don't think my head's going to fit in the screen if you keep going. Eh? <laughs> Genuinely, <laughs> mate. Honestly, I you know I. I I sort of I want to I want to give credit where it's due, and I want to give people a lift up through my reach, however I can, because you know it gets reciprocated eventually down the line. So, and and your channel is shit all. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's broadcast quality. That full HD is something I'd expect to be watching on like Amazon or Netflix. It's it's really good. 
it's nice to hear, mate, because the the I mean, I know we're going to talk about it like in detail later, I'm sure, but the uh, the figures aren't that high on it, which is fine because I don't chase figures. Other than it took over my life for, for yeah. a year, so for the yeah. figures to not be high, it's a bit like oh, I wish it just just to give me a give me a little pat on the back for working hard. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. We'll 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 get you a boost off the back of this for sure because I'll, oh, I'll mate, share it. I'll cool. share it on my main teapot channel as well. The podcast channel is is much smaller, but um I'll I'll share across on my my norm my, my normal socials and ah, you're, a legend. you're too kind, mate. You're too kind. Mate, no, 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 credit where it's due, as I said. Right. So Ollie, um before we crack on, who are you? What do you do? Who am I? What do I do? Well, my name's Ollie. <laughs> uh, so, in the so, what do I do? What do you want me to talk about first, mate? Bikes or work or what? You've got, have you got um, care. Okay, yeah. Let's go. How how did you get into bikes? And um, obviously, you have the coolest job in the world, which we'll have to talk about. If you can talk about that, are you allowed to talk? Yeah, yeah about of course. It? Yeah, of course. I'm. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, how did I get into bikes? So, so biking in general, or videos biking, I suppose. So, my dad was a biker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think a lot of our dads were bikers in this in this scene. Uh, yeah, he he rode bikes. I remember just being on the back of his bikes all through my youth. And then because he was a paramedic as well, when I got to the the age that I could ride bikes, his rule was you're not having a bike. Classic <laughs> parent, you're not having a bike. They're dangerous. But yeah. um, uh, so uh, so I think just through <laughs> through a rebellious streak, I got into bikes. I actually drove. I went with my mate. I remember I was I just passed my bike license. How old is that? 17, is it? You can pass your bike license. 18. 16, 17, yeah, yeah, something like I that. I was really young, yeah. And um I should I know that being an ex-copper, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was gonna come on to that as well. Yeah. So anyway, I um I found an SV650, one of the old curvy models, uh, mm-hmm. up in Macclesfield, and I snuck behind my dad's back and went up and bought it. And when I got there, the guy was a bit shifty. It got an MOT, but it was a bit sketchy. But I was young, keen, and I was just going to throw money at him. And yeah. it, it blew itself to pieces three months <laughs> later uh, through lack of maintenance from him, not from me. I look after my bikes. Um, but, yeah, so that's how I got into biking. And obviously, my dad knew I had one. And from then, he was supportive. And then I went through, I suppose, what, in my year, at least, the normal route. So I was a kid who watched a lot of MotoGP. I was always up at Silverstone watching the GP or, Don- or Donaldson Park, and I, used to, I sort of lived in Northamptonshire. Uh, so I had sports. I had an SV650, then I had some sports bikes, and then I was track riding, I had a track bike, blah, 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 blah. And then in 2017, I was working with a bunch of fellas who you might have seen in my, in my films, uh, Seats, YT, and Al. Shout out to those boys. I love those guys. And they were adventure riders, adventure bike riders, which I'd never mm. really heard of other than those two those two people that went riding the long way around and down that everyone heard of. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they said, get yourself an adventure bike and join in. So I bought a Triumph, uh, went to Morocco with them, and the rest is history, I suppose. That's how Ollie, that's how Bodge Tape Adventures started, and then that led on to Ollie Moto. But that's sort of my biking. I've not had millions of bikes. I've just been biking for a long time. I tend to keep my bikes for a while. So Right, okay, then. Um, I, can, I can sort of... I'm quite similar to that in the sense of my dad, my dad, my mum and dad. Sorry, that's my dog. Apologies. I'm I'm home alone at the moment. My, that's my right, wife's away. From... Cats, cats coming into mine in a minute. Yeah, yeah. So the, the dog just comes in to say hello. Oi, out. Is it? I look at him. Get him in. Get him involved. She's, she's down there. She's a nightmare. She's um. She's about a 40 or 35 kilogram idiot. Oh, right. <laughs> she's lovely, but she's got no sense. But anyway, yeah, my, my, my mom and dad were very anti bikes. And uh, I was always told, you're not having a bike, you're not having a bike. And that sort of carried on until like I was in my mid 30s almost before I got a, a bike. And then it turns out my dad actually used to ride. And I didn't, I didn't know any of that. Didn't know at all. <laughs> no, I didn't know. Oh, wow. Well. Like, he obviously, I think he he gave up riding not long after he met my mum, I think, or maybe just before he met my mum. And uh, yeah, that was it. I never, I never knew he was a biker. So he used to have a Douglas, a Douglas something, uh, oh, Douglas you, Dragonfly. Is that right? Is that oh, right? You, you'll lose me. I'm not. I'm not too clued up Some on the old bikes yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Right. Okay. Well, we'll come back to to bikes in a second. But can we talk about your awesome job? <laughs> if you want to, yeah. It's just the coolest thing ever. Go on, tell everyone what you are. So yeah, I'm a lucky boy. So in my in my well, I'm a paramedic and in my day job, I work for a company called Bristow Helicopters, uh, flying around in the search and rescue helicopters for the UK. So I'm uh my official title is Winchman Paramedic. But the way I explain it to people is if you see a one of the red and white helicopters flying around that says Coast Guard on the side. And there's an idiot dangling underneath it. Well, I'm that idiot. Uh, so, so that's what I do as a job. How, and, uh, yeah. how do you get into that? 
it's it's weird it's, it's a so i was in the military i served mm-hmm. in the air force for a while uh and i ended up going into search and i was a crewman so i wasn't in a medical trade i was called a load master people might know it as right uh, uh so i used to fly basically flying in helicopters was my job but not medical uh i got into medical 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 stuff for a side avenue i think i always tell people so i think the fact that my dad was a paramedic and my mum was a nurse i think just through osmosis yeah. had an in, an I didn't even realize it was like a subliminal interest in medicine that popped out at some point. But yeah, so I, I got into medicine and then I got offered to go and do a selection for search and rescue. So you remember the big yellow helicopters in the air force, yeah. you probably saw them on TV because Prince William flew in them. So they were mm-hmm. all over the TV. So I ended up on those helicopters for a bit. And then that sort of gave me the qualifications. So when I left the military, I could knock on Mr. Bristow's door and say, hi, oh, is there any chance I can have a job? And I was fortunate enough that I got in. I keep saying fortunate and lucky because it's a very, a niche job and i feel quite lucky to privileged to be one of the few that gets to do it but yeah it's a fun yeah, job definitely. Really work yeah. hard don't get me wrong but it's still a fun job <laughs> mega oh man yeah. I, I could talk to you about that let alone the bikes but, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that comes up i had a quick look over some of the questions uh, i was just trying to gauge how many questions we had and i'm sure somebody asks about the job so we'll we'll save any further discussion about that till we get to the questions so bikes into youtube how how did you start the whole YouTube thing? Well, like I said, yeah. So when when I went on that Morocco trip in 2017 um, with a group of group of guys, I just I'd noticed at that point that so, like biking and social media, it probably didn't come on in 2017, but I noticed in 2017 that it was a thing. So mm-hmm. I just said to the lads, "Look, should we?" I've always been a bit creative, if you like, and I, I said to the and I've always got like want an outlet to do something. I said, "Should we should we film it and like make a film?" And they were like. <sighs> I mean, they couldn't care less, to be honest. They were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and I have, and I had absolutely zero film training. I'd never made a movie at this point. I'd never even tried to make a movie. Uh, maybe like bang something together on iMovie, but you know, not done yeah. anything proper. Uh, so I bought a GoPro, one GoPro. And I said to the guys, buy a GoPro. So we all had GoPros. I think Seats is actually was a, like a GoPro 2 or something. The joke was that we had to put coal into it to keep it going. But <laughs> uh, so yeah, we, we went and filmed it. And I mean, it was it was hard to film because A, I didn't know what I was doing, but oh, look at that. <laughs> look original, at that. original it looks, GoPro. It looks like you've made that out of tinfoil. <laughs> no, mate, look. <laughs> right, I want to see you make a video of that and just compare the quality. There's a two. Oh, you've got them all. Yeah, yeah, I've got the two, I've got the three plus. And then oh. after the three plus, I gave up on GoPro till the... Till the seven, yeah. Oh, I'm a go. I'm a, I'm a GoPro uh, GoPro groupie. I'm afraid, but yeah. So yeah, yeah. We had, we had a we had some GoPros and we went to film it, and it was tricky to film because I didn't know what I was doing. They weren't that bothered uh, nowadays. They are, but at the time they weren't because they didn't have. It was all in my head, really. I knew what I was trying to do, but they had yeah. no idea. So it's hard to like go, hey, speak to the camera when someone's having a bad. You're falling <laughs> off. Speak to yeah. the camera, and they're like. Mate, do one. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this podcast. So do, of course you are. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. Um, but, yeah so, but then when I, <laughs> when I made Road to Morocco, which was a series that came from it, when they saw what I made, and it was a bit of fluke, but you can you can do anything by watching YouTube videos nowadays, can't you? You can yeah. even make a YouTube video. Uh, yeah, so it, it took off from then, and I realised that I quite enjoyed making them. I mean, they take a lot of effort, but when you, you put your heart and soul into these things, and when a few people say, oh, that was really good, mate, and... And then a few people would message us saying, oh, because of you, you know, we've, we've, I've got back into biking or because of you, you want to go to Morocco. Mm-hmm. As in, yep. Me is in like bodge tape. I don't mean me. Um, and that was great. And I thought, actually, we've got an avenue here. Exactly what you're doing, mate, with all of your wicked content. We've got an avenue here to, I don't like use, um, what's the word everyone always uses? I don't like like influencer words. Don't I? But I, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the words motivate. I like to motivate people, inspire. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. I like to motivate people to go out and do stuff. So when you get, like we had one guy from, I think it was Australia. And he was like, oh, lads, I've watched your series. It was excellent. I haven't bought it for ages, but I've just gone and bought a Triumph Tiger because of watching your series. And now I'm going to go on loads of adventures. And you're like, well, there you go. Even that one comment made it worthwhile. Absolutely. It's I fell in love with making movies. So yeah, so now, now I make loads. And the reason um, I do Oli Moto now, this stuff, mm-hmm. we're, we're both branded, like it, mate. Uh, the reason <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I do Oli Moto is purely because I do bodge tape all the time if I could. But trying to get four people in one place at one time is a nightmare. Yeah. And I was like, I needed an avenue to make some stuff. So I do Ollie Moto stuff. And then hopefully we can do a lot of bodge tape stuff when I can get the guys together. But we'll see. Maybe we've got some plans in the very near future. Who knows, Bruce? 
You know, I say, right, uh, right. A few more yeah. beers and we'll fight, figure out what's going on now. I'll be anyone's after that. The T-shirt will be off. Mate. <laughs> so, um, like, f- full HD. I, I, I've, I watched all the full HD series and then I watched your recent, I think it was your recent How Not To, was it not How Not To Trail Ride right, or How Not yeah. To, yeah, where you broke your shoulder and carried mm-hmm. on riding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was exactly. bad enough when you went. I dislocated my shoulder like three times mm-hmm. and carried on riding, but then it turns out it was actually broken. Mate, I'm a, I'm a muppet, so we can talk about that one first. <laughs> yeah, I always on. say I, I tick the boxes for. I mean, I'm a paramedic. I've dealt with lots of poorly people, and I t- I know I tick the boxes for worst patient because I'm a bloke, <laughs> and we tend to just go, yeah, I'll walk it off. Mm-hmm. And I'm a and I'm a, I'm a paramedic, and we tend to just go, yeah, I'll walk it off. And I'm a biker, and we tend to just go, yeah, I'll walk it off. So I tried to walk it off that day, but actually I, I had a, I think I had uh, a couple of days off work. So it was a bit sore initially, but then I went back to work. So I was still dangling under helicopters and I, it was, it was only when I realized it was niggling a bit because we have to do loads of funky hand signals and underneath. And I was like, my shoulder. With a broken hurting. shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not trying to sound heroic. It wasn't hurting. It was just niggling. I was like, this doesn't quite feel right. So then that's when I got an x-ray and they're like, yeah, mate, you've broke your shoulder. I'm like, oh, right. Okay. That'd be why it's niggling then. <laughs> so, and then I had surgery, which unfortunately took me off work for a while, which is annoying. But There is there video evidence of me <laughs> crying like a baby when I dislocated my shoulder. Genuinely, right? I, I used to play rugby. I've broken most, I think I broke both legs. I've broken ribs. I've done, I've like broke my collarbone. I've done all sorts. I dislocated my shoulder when I got wiped out on the bike. And that is the worst pain I've ever experienced in my life. And you were talking to camera and lifting a bike up. <laughs> hey, there's, I'm, not, I'm not tough. There's different dislocations. <laughs> I'll play paramedic here. You can dislocate in different ways. Yours obviously hurt more than mine. I had an easy one. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Did you hear that, wife? Did you hear that? I get nothing but grief. Bruce right, is because... really tough. <laughs> <laughs> like she, she, she's the one that got my phone out in the hospital because I was, I was lying there for... I got knocked off at seven in the morning, five past seven. I was on my way oh. home from night. And then they didn't reset my shoulder till I think it was half past three in the afternoon. So I was lying there and they were doing all sorts, you know, like the bag of saline attached to the arm, trying to, and with me hanging off the bed. Oh, and, yeah. But yours was I, still dislocated, though. That's the difference. Oh. Yours was still out of its socket. Yeah, Mine yeah. went straight back in because I, you saw me in the video pop it back in. But uh, yeah, that's why yours was hurting more. I put mine straight back in. Well, I well, well my. Well, my, my wife straight away when I'm like trying not to cry in the, the <laughs> hospital ward, she's like, "Where's your phone?" So I was like, oh, "I was just thinking she might like call my brother or my dad or something." She got the phone out. She starts filming. She's like, "You'll thank me for this." She start- <laughs> <laughs> the we'll doctor's looking at me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh mate, it was agony. It was absolute agony. <laughs> yeah, well, proper dislocations are sore. I've, I've taken some people in the hospital with a full on like dislocation. Yeah. There, they look pretty sore. But I got I got lucky that it. It came out forwards and then went back in again. So we were right. all right. Yeah, we've I'm not, got I'm not a... tough. I don't want people to think I'm some sort of like double super hard bloke. I just got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> we've got a, a 96 year old neighbour next door, and he um, he fell in the garden one day and dislocated his shoulder, and he sat there for about five or six hours till my wife. I think my wife had been out and she came home, and then he walked across the drive to us, knocked on the door, and he was just like, "Any chance you could maybe take me to the doctors or something?" So she you ran and up the doctors, and he's obviously had a dislocated shoulder. So the grief I get because he like didn't even blink. <laughs> he was just like, "Yeah, the shoulder doesn't yeah. feel quite right." <laughs> and whereas I was sick. like, "Yeah," whereas I yeah, was crying yeah. like a baby. <laughs> they're so stoic that that generation. You you turn Next up and they, they they do not. Their arm could be hanging off, and yeah, I'd yeah. walk in in my when I do my road paramedic stuff, and they'd be like, "Oh, I'm okay. Do you want a cup of tea?" I'm like, "No, it's all right. Your arm's hanging off." Like, <laughs> yeah, they're great. Just all, Total different generation, isn't it? Yeah, they total, are. Total different are. generation. Um, right, dude, I think uh, the best plan of action here is going to be to start working our way through questions because there's there's quite a few over on Patreon and then we've got some over on Instagram as well to get through. So uh, Facebook just seemed to be loads of people going, I've not seen that. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Or, <laughs> so I've checked it out. I've subbed. So you've already <laughs> got some subs. I, over that. That. I noticed, <laughs> I didn't realise you'd posted and also my Instagram was going follow, follow. I was like, why has that suddenly happened? It's because of, <laughs> of you. So thanks, mate. Yeah. No worries. No problem at all. <laughs> right. First of all, we'll head across to the clan over on Patreon. So that's patreon.com for slash teapot one. First one, Charlie Callard. Evening, gents. Hope you're both well. All good. Thank you, Charlie. So a couple of questions. 
I've never been camping, but it's something I want to try. I'm wondering what are the rules for underwear? Is it one use or is it inside out and turn them around to save space? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of packing light. So, uh, yeah. well, I mean, do you want to take that? Are these questions for me? Have you got you got to sign that? You go for it, mate. For both of us, I think, um, at the risk of <laughs> at the risk of probably turning people off, um, I'll, I'll wear underwear as long as I possibly can. I'm like you, I, I will pack light, real mm-hmm. light. So yeah. yeah, forwards, backwards, inside out, the right way around, and then probably go around again for another lot. <laughs> so I'd say exactly the same. And what I'd get hold of, uh, and I got issued a load when I used to serve, is um, antimicrobial pants, I think they're called. anti. You, if you type in something like that, microbial pants or something, they'll come up. You can buy right. them. They're, they're the way forward because they're, they're designed to vent, shall we say. Oh, so okay. uh, they don't get too stinky. <laughs> and, <they're, laughs> and you can wash them and dry them really quick. So me and the lads, that's what we use nowadays. We, we, we'll just roll around in them. But what I would say to Charlie is if he's thinking about going on his first time, I know what he'll do. He'll pack, he'll go on, say he's going on a seven day bike trip. He'll pack eight pairs of pants just to be sure. And then he'll use two of them. I guarantee yeah. it because you just won't yeah, bother yeah, yeah. getting changed because none of us do when we're camping. So you yeah. use because it'd be too cold. I'll just keep these on. Then you'd be like, oh, right, next time I'll just take two. <laughs> yeah, camp camping a hundred percent. I think yeah. when I'm when I'm doing tours with punters and we're staying in hotels, I'm always like, <laughs> I need I need to try and be I need to it's try and be fairly fresh. Then, is it? It's not yeah. as acceptable to stink at that point. Yeah, yeah. you sat by <laughs> yourself in the bar. Like, Where's everyone going? Yeah. <laughs> do you do you do much of the camping then? The motor camping. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. I mean, that's that's my choice, uh, and I know a lot of the people I ride with it's their choice as well. I think it just it, it makes it more adventurous for me. And I'm not, I'm never like a ooh and whinge about everyone else. Like if you want to stay in a hotel, I think that's fine. I, every now and again, I'll div into a hotel, especially if it's chucking it down with rain. Right. Sometimes you'd be like, I'm just going to go in a hotel tonight. But I, I love camping because I love the you do this when you're camping, don't you? You sit around, yeah. you have a gob off, you drink a few beers, you all shiver together, and yeah, it's it's. <laughs> It's, it, it bonds. Yeah, I, I love it. It just adds to the, the, the you know, the adventure for me. Have you seen um, the Aussie moto vlogger, um, Rob, Moto Feels? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a bit. Yeah. Have you seen his other channel? He's got one of these ASMR channels based no. all around camping. So he's basically, like he's, he's, he's got the Moto Feels channel, which was doing mm. really well. You know, I think he got up to like 50,000 subs in about, five, six months or something, or maybe a year. But it really it really grew quite quick. And then he started this ASMR, you know, which is all about noise. You know, ASMR, I think it's ASMR. No, I, don't, I don't know what ASMR is. So it's it's just, it's just... Um, What's it stand for, a, like anti-sensory or something? Like? Something like that, yeah. It's, yeah. it's basically, yeah. it's noise. So it's a video, but he just, like, he will record the noise of the wind and the trees setting up the campsite, you know, just ah. all the, the associated audio with that, he will record with a proper sound recorder. And then obviously in post, it comes over the visuals and, you know, over the visuals and it's, it's emphasised. Yeah, so he yeah. doesn't say anything at all. And then I think one vid or two vid, He'd already smashed like his viewing figures and his subs for all the, the other Moto Fields channel. So he really? was like, "Oh, I think I'll, I think I'll start chucking everything I'll into a, this instead." I'll do a few more of these, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, there's there's one channel in the UK, Mo, uh, Nick Moto UK. He started doing some as well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that's going for him, but um, yeah, I remember when look, I, yeah, yeah, when I was chatting to Rob, I was like, "Ooh." Oh, should look at this. And then I saw that Moto UK had started doing it as well. I'll, I'll leave that. <laughs> it sounds like effort, though, doesn't it, Bruce? It's just, we know what, it's, you know what film is like. It sounds like effort. Another guy yeah. that does something similar, although I don't know if he does AS and whatever you just call it. I don't know if he does it officially, but do you know Tom Hansen in uh, in Norway? Thomas S. Hansen? He's no. a guy that you should you should tap up. I think you'd get on with him. But he okay. does a lot of, I don't know if he records the audio, but that same sort of thing where it's all about the visuals and the audio and the experience. You sort of feel like you're doing it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that that, that cool sounds guy. very similar to that, Tom. Yeah. Tom Hansen, right? I'll check Tom him. Tom Hansen, yeah, I've, I've been speaking to him for years. He's a really good guy. Yeah, nice one, cool. Yeah. Um, right, okay. Charlie's got a second question. What's the one luxury item you always take away with you? The one luxury item. Um, hmm. Does a hip flask count as a luxury item? I would. I'm that Scottish. Miss- is that say that's, that's a necessity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I used to live in Scotland, buddy, so um, it's always got some decent single malt in there. We, that's another chat for another time. I well, suppose you, then... Ken Ross. 
Uh, I, I was at um, Lossy Mouth for a while, so I used oh, to live in right. Elgin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, that's when I got into whiskey. Um, I reckon <laughs> foot powder then, if you want to call that a luxury item. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's wow. Yeah. There's not a lot of people take it. Foot powder. Got to look after my feet when you're riding. That's the military, isn't it? That's the <laughs> military. It, it probably is. It probably is. Well, yeah, everyone I ride with does, and they're all serving a lot of them. So, yeah, I always have a big tub of foot powder because when you've had a long, hot, sweaty day, I'm usually got, I've usually got sealskin socks on. So, you've had a sweaty day. Yeah. Look out, keep your feet fresh. So, that's so boring, isn't it? You expect me to say something really funky. <laughs> no, but I've got, I've got this. I've, it, it, it strikes a chord with me because my feet are my feet are minging. They they are a state, and uh, yeah, I definitely need to be using powder <laughs> and cream and just set them on fire. To be perfectly honest with you, uh, one luxury item I'd always take away with me. Well, I used to say my phone, but your phone's not a luxury anymore, right. is it? It's just. It's just, no, and I was that's what I was going to say something like that. But my, you know, I've always got a pannier full of filming kit and phones, but I yeah. see that as as a necessity. I need to yeah. post a story on Instagram and film something. So that's just yeah. like that side. Mm, luxury. Bloody it's yeah. hard, isn't it? When you pack light, it's hard to think of anything luxury. I, I mean, I mean, uh, I consider my drone as part of my camera c- equipment. Yeah. But you don't need it, I suppose. But it, the drone just gives you. You know, if you if it's used right and sparingly, it's. It, it, I, was, I was just about just to say, up. don't over drone people. Yeah, don't yeah. over drone. Yeah, everyone does to begin with, don't they? It's like <laughs> yeah. three minutes of this this beautiful drone footage. <laughs> people watch five seconds of it, switch off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> skip to the drone. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'd have to say my drone, Charlie. To be honest, I can't think of, I can't think of anything else that would be a luxury. I feel like we've let Charlie down, Bruce. I know. Like he's yeah, expecting something like very extravagant. I'm I'm looking around my garage for inspiration, but I can't see anything. Uh, uh yeah, good point. Sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry, Charlie. I'm out. You yeah. know, when 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 you're budding Spielbergs, you know. <laughs> we got all these cameras, sound kit, <laughs> laptops. No, I can't think of any luxuries. Uh yeah, that'll have to do, Charlie. Sorry, pal. Next one, John Powell. I watched Ollie's Nepal film at the ABR Festival, more than worthy of a big screen. How do you let the arsehole in a group tour know that he is the he is the arsehole? I'm only asking so I know what to look out for. Cheers to you both. <laughs> Come on, what's the story oh, there? Gosh. I haven't I haven't yeah. seen the Nepal one. I, uh, well, I, I, I've I've seen it. <laughs> but, uh, I've, I've seen it. it. Took me seven months to edit. I don't know who he's referring to, and I don't want to drop myself <laughs> in it. Uh, how do you let the arsehole in the group? Okay, let's 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 be a bit more diplomatic then. Um, conflicting personalities within a group. How do you deal with that? How do you deal? Yeah, I um, God, I think it's best to nip things in the bud. That's how I roll. I'm quite a straight talking fella. I'm a, I'm mm. a very nice and empathetic person. If I need to be in my paramedic world, etc. But I'm quite straight talking. If and having worked in small teams in in you know in remote places, you've just got to tell people otherwise it just escalates yep. and escalates and yep. then it blows up into something it didn't need to be so uh confront but there's ways to confront people you don't just go up and start poking <laughs> do you? you can try and be a bit <laughs> diplomatic in your approach but i think leaving things to I've, I've witnessed it a few times if you leave personally if you leave things to go on they just go up and up and up and up and up and then yeah that, that's very true yeah lots of swear words get thrown around and doors get slammed and Sometimes it gets a bit physical, doesn't it? But yeah, yeah, avoid I, that. It's good. I, I've had, I'd say that the worst. Normally, I'm all right. Normally, I'm okay with the groups that come away with me. But I remember, I remember, I did a, a tour to Morocco for for another company, and um, that it was just a bit of a nightmare. That that whole tour was just a nightmare. It was there was just there was issues from day one. You know, like one of the bikes broke down before we even got onto the main road. You know, we hadn't even we hadn't even left the the headquarters for this this company. It was oh, just mate. it was, was just a nice bike, a higher bike. It was a higher. The company had hired a bike for me because all their bikes were full with the punters. You know, the, the punters had used all their bikes, so they said to me, "Would you be happy with a higher bike?" And I'm, yeah, of course. So they hired one in, and it and it basically they'd the, the higher company had just wired the sat nav direct to the battery. You know, like no triggered live or anything like that. So <clears throat> when um, when we sorted the sat navs the night before putting the roots and everything in obviously the sat nav had just stayed on and it just drained the battery so uh yeah 
basically my bike was knackered, which then meant we missed the, the ferry we were supposed to get, which then meant we were late getting into Morocco itself through the land border at Thoueta. And then it was a big, we were supposed to be in um, Fez that night. Mm-hmm. And it's a good, I think, 700 kilometres, 800 kilometres. It's a long slog. ride. For yeah. day one, that's a slog, yeah. Absolutely. And, and I did say that to them at the start, to the company. I was like, that's a that's a big ride. And <laughs> half and half of this group were like in their late 60s to 70s. Mm-hmm. I was like, this this is a big ride, this. And then it turns out that they, they weren't the fastest in the world, you know, and... Um, had no intention of being any faster. So all those things combined on the first day was just like, right, we're never going to get to Fez. So I'm I'm having to phone up this company from Morocco and going, you need to rebook somewhere because yeah. there's not a chance. And then it happened to be like a national holiday. So it's just like... We, we ended that's, up. That's like a nightmare. It, it was, and it, and things just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And like you, like you just said, you know, if you don't address conflicts within the group, early on, then yeah, people just start resenting everybody and it was oh, yeah. it's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> and if yeah. you do, if you do address, I like the word you just use it, if you do address it early on, then it tends to sort itself out very quickly, mm. in my experience. And you think, yeah. oh, I'm really glad I had a chat about that. So yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And a beer helps, doesn't it? Like, we're, we're, we're oh, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Have a beer, right? Okay. What's what's the problem? Let's sort it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. So you were at the ABR festival. Yeah. I saw you, mate, and I came to say hello. I think I texted you about it. You were talking, but you were surrounded by punters, and I was like, I'll talk to them later, and then I didn't see you again. So, Oh, mate, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you going next year? Yeah, mate, yeah, yeah I'm doing – um, uh, I won't say anymore because it hasn't been released yet. Yeah, I'm going to be there next year. So, <laughs> Brilliant. Good man. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm there next year, so, um, yeah, I'll have a beer we'll with you there for sure. Out, mate. Yeah, that'd be Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Nice one. All right, next one, Pete English. Oh, here we go. Hi, guys. Hope you're both fitting well. Fantastic, you've got Ollie on. I've had the pleasure of, uh, says, changing with him a couple of times at the ABR Festival. Changing, changing. with him a couple? I, hmm. I remember talking okay. to Pete. I don't remember changing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll assume that that's like preemptive texting or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is. Uh, I really enjoy all his videos and tours, especially the Morocco trip. Also, the recent ride out with Greg and the Adventure Spec guys looked like a great day was had by all. My question, what did you as a teenager... Sorry, what did you have as a teenager and don't have now, but wish you did? And what stopped you getting it back? Virginity doesn't count. (laughs) (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) Excuse me for interrupting, folks, but it is sponsor shout out time. And this month, we have a new sponsor. Welcome to Travel Escapes. Now, I've got some blob to read out. Travel and Escape is an independent travel agent. They are ABTA and at all protected for your peace of mind. For hassle free, tailor made holidays from staycations, day experiences, cruises, luxury holidays, and so much more. You can find them all on the socials or book directly online using the link. Now, folks, I'll leave all their socials and a website link down below. Make sure you check that out. If you're watching a video, have a look at the vid description. If you're listening to the podcast, check out the show notes. There will be hyperlinks there. Make sure you give them a click, a follow, a like. And if you're looking for a little break for you and the loved one, you and the family, you and whoever, maybe just you yourself, make sure you check out Travel and Escape. We are also sponsored by... Enov. Now, Enov have been a long-term sponsor for the main channel over on Teapot One, but they're also helping out and sponsoring the podcast. So a massive thanks to them. Enov specialise in motorcycle dash cam systems. They do uh, the front and rear uh, dual camera K series. That's the K3 and the flagship K5. K3 is 1080 front and rear. K5 is 4K at the front, 1080 at the rear. The K5 also has much faster Wi-Fi. So both the K3 and K5 utilize a a mobile app where you can view your footage, you can change settings, you can share on socials, you can have a look at your GPS overlay, all this sort of stuff. Both do the job if you just simply want a dash cam. If you ever get involved in an accident, the first thing your insurance is going to ask is, is there any CCTV? And obviously, if you have one of these systems fitted, then you can turn around and go, yes, I do. And if you head to inov.co.uk and use the code teapot you'll get five percent off of all inov and Techologic cameras so a massive thanks to inov 
And lastly for this one, we're also sponsored by Ultimate Add-ons. Now, Ultimate Add-ons, they make dustproof and shockproof mobile phone uh, cases and action camera mounts. They will fit just about every single bike out there. Me, personally, I always use the Helix Strap mount because it means I can easily attach that to just about any bike that I'm uh, riding at that time. I can jump on and off on bikes and just easily unscrew the, the strap, whack it on the next bike, tighten it all up, and off I go. It's very versatile. Versatile. I've had no vibration issues affecting my camera using the Helix strap. That's the one that I will stand by and swear by. Been using it about five years now. So again, if you head to Ultimate Add-ons, that's Ultimate with A-D-D-O-N-S, ultimateaddons.com. If you use the code TPOT110, so T-E-A-P-O-T-O-N-E with the number 10, you'll get 10% off all ultimate add-ons. Okay, that'll do us for now. Let's get back to the podcast. God, these are deep. I didn't. I wasn't expecting such deep questions, mate. What did you I never know what you're going to get with them. That's no. why I like the questions. You just never know. Do you know? Do you know what? This is going to be a really. I don't know if this is a good or a rubbish answer, but time. I seem to have a lot of time Ooh. as a teenager to do stuff, whereas now I just seem to bounce from pillar to post and never, I never get like just before coming on when you were texting me a minute ago, I was running around the house like I've been it's been carnage all day I just never have any time so yeah I, I seem to at the time at the time when you're a teenager you think everything's too busy but actually I sat around doing not a lot chilling out and having a good time so having have a you good heard, time right? have you heard the the like the theory behind that you know like when when you're young you know when you're at school and stuff school holidays feel like they go on forever don't they but then, mm. as you said, when you get older, just the years just fly by, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Have you heard? Have you heard the theory behind it? I heard no, it on Joe on. Rogan actually. It's um, it's something That's to do Joe with Rogan, yeah. Say. He had he had some psychologist on, and that that came up in conversation, and they were like, ah, this is the explanation, and it's something to do with frame of reference. So when you're younger, say say up to your teens, say up to, or even up to twenty, so up to twenty years of age, or certainly going through school, and let's say you know ten to 17, 10 to 18 years of age through secondary school. You've only been on the planet for 10 to 18 years. So that sort of six, seven weeks that you get off for your summer, that two months, that is, uh, what's two months? That's a sixth of a year. And obviously mm -hmm. multiply that by either 10 or 18. So well, that's, that's, a, that's quite a percentage of your overall lifespan that you can remember. Whereas once you start moving into your, say, certainly into your 30s and your 40s, you've then got 30 years or 40 years worth of experience and, mm -hmm. and memories. Yeah. So that, that two months is now a much, much smaller slice of your frame of reference that you can think of don't know if it's true but it's well, I mean, it makes sense, sense doesn't it it makes yeah. sense yeah yeah but i mean yeah so time's one thing but i suppose when i was young as well i used to i'm a, I'm a bit musical and i used to play in a lot of bands and stuff when i was younger and i miss that yeah. i don't know if that's a one thing i don't know if i can class it as a one thing but being playing i used to play drums and stuff being in a band was a great laugh oh so. did you yeah, yeah. So I, I miss, I definitely, I was just, as you were talking then, and you were saying, oh, when you used to be young, I was like, oh, yeah, I used to play bands and stuff. Yeah, I miss all that sort of stuff. Mate, you've got a garage. You don't do that anymore. Drum kit, drum kit in your garage. Get an electric one. Uh, yeah, I used to have an electric drum kit, and uh, my electric drum kit is now walking around and four years old, so. <laughs> <laughs> Fair one. It's a life changes, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, my, son's, my son is 25 this year. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, really? So, uh, yeah, hell. yeah. I had him young. I had him at 21. So, um, yeah. That's what I played to, mate. <laughs> that, that, that was a shock. I was at uni. That was a shock to the system. <laughs> I've got something to tell you. Oh, yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah. I'll go then. Yeah. <laughs> you better meet mum. <laughs> um, right. So, what did you have as a teenager that you don't have now? Wish you did. Ooh. Mm, do you know I I don't like to I don't like to have regrets, but I do wish I'd I used to play at a good level of rugby in through my mm -hmm. teens, and and I wish I wish I'd pushed that more because I sort of I trialed for Scotland and then I didn't get in, and then I just never I just didn't you know I sort of just thought ah well I've done it uh, now yeah, that's yeah, that yeah. yeah beer and woman took over and yet mm -hmm. like I trial I trialed with a chap called Jason White who then went on to become Scotland captain British Lions you know 
became a professional rugby player. And I played with Jason all through. I used to play against him uh, all through school levels and then representative level and stuff. So, you know, like I was no way the same level as he was. You know, I wasn't as good as him. But I wish I'd, I wish I'd pushed it more just to see no, could you ever wear the jersey and yeah, yeah, walk out on Murrayfield or something like that? That would have been cool. That's about it, really. I don't. I tend. I tend not to like to have regrets. You know, you make your that's choices. I think, yeah, I sort of just crack on with life. I'm not someone who dwells. So yeah, I, I thought that was a really boring answer. I, like, yeah, I think you wanted me to say like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm bloody KX one two five or something funky. But like, <laughs> I've got nothing. I could... <laughs> Go on then. Favorite bike. Favorite bike you've ever owned. Favorite bike I've ever owned. Um... I think it's got to be this, to be honest. And I'm not saying that because it's next to me, but this is the 990. Um, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is my baby. This is known as the Bat Bike. I don't name my bikes, but it was named by uh, by Seats's Uncle John, actually. Hi, Uncle John, if you're watching. Yeah, this is the Bat. They used to be black, so the Bat Bike. But I think this is my favorite, just probably just linked to all the adventures I've been on on it. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I loved, yeah. I've loved all the bikes I've owned, and I, you know, I've got back into track bike. If I turn this camera around again, my CBR track bike's just here. Uh, but this, this, I'd love this thing. Every time I get on that bike, it puts a smile on my face. It, it just can't not put a smile on my face. It's a proper hooligan, isn't it? The nine. Oh, I was about to say it's a hooligan spot. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. do ride like a bit of a hooligan. Yeah. You know, I'm a leveled bloke, but not when I'm on that. <laughs> <laughs> so that that vid when you're careering around Salisbury Plain, I I've I've been to Salisbury Plain once with a company called Phoenix Phoenix um, Motorcycle Training. Yeah, they I've do heard, off-road heard of stuff. Them. Yeah, yeah. And I was on a little, what was I on? CB, Honda CB 250, I think, or maybe it was a 300. And you, you could you could probably walk faster than than I was going through most of. Because <laughs> Salisbury's really, it's like chalky and, and muddy and oh, slidey mate. and horrible. Oh, isn't it? my nemesis. Yeah, we can oh, talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, ended up, I ended up getting stuck in a, I think it was a tank rut uh, in through the chalk. And I think it was a tank, unless it was a fucking great big, huge rut anyway that went yeah. right across this field. And the instructor who I was riding behind, he sort of came up to it, went perpendicular, crossed it over the other side, and off he went. And like I just, I, I, I just marked it up. So I ended up sliding into this rut, and then it was just like, well, you ain't getting out of that. <laughs> I just had sure, to slide. Like, is a it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. Like um. Mm. I, I, I'm known for falling off a fair few times, but that's because I always put it in my head because people find it funny, but I do fall over a lot. But chalk is the one that normally gets me. You, you just, I remember riding with Al Hoosh once, Al, Al from Bodge Tape, and I just heard from behind me and a, and a bike rev. You know when people fall off and you hear a bike yeah. rev? And I turn around and on a flat chalk surface, he'd managed to go over the handlebars. I've got not, he doesn't know how, I don't know how, wow. but chalk just, chalk will get you. It will just, if you switch off for half a second, bang, you're off. There's yeah, loads of that over. No logic. I'm in I'm in Kent and uh, the next county along Surrey. There's yeah. loads. A lot of the off road trails there, the green lanes, they're really chalky and horrible. There's you a could few meet in Surrey, mate, because I'm in I'm in Hampshire, so it's not that far to meet. There you go. Yeah, but that's to do that off road bollocks, isn't it? Don't do that. <laughs> I can stay on the road. It's fine. But sorry, mate, I talked to every story. Go on. No, mate, no, 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 no. Don't worry. Just fucking, I've, I've got verbal diarrhea. Um, yeah, I'm up for meeting up, definitely. And yeah. um, if, if you want to babysit me around some green lanes, I'm up for that. Or we, we go out and do <laughs> mate, some proper riding on, yeah. on some tarmac. Yeah, you can yeah. ride this, mate. I've got on this thing. Yeah. Right, you're on. I'll give <laughs> no, you the GS. Oh, you've no, ridden yeah. the GS, haven't you? Yeah, I have, mate. Yeah. I like them, though. It's good. It's good. I don't like Is the front suspension. But do you not? On road, amazing. So I rode an uh, R1250, G yeah. GSR, I always get confused, one of them. And yeah. uh, on road, it was incredible. I thought the bike was unbelievable. And then off road, I thought it was really, really good. I just wasn't a fan of the front suspension. Mm. I got off a few times and Greg, the wheels of Morocco, he's a mate of mine, but the yeah, guy who runs yeah, yeah. wheels of Morocco, he pulled up, he's like, why are you getting off your bike? I was like, I think I've just dented the front rim. He's like, no, nah, it's just suspension, mate, and rode off. And I had a look and went, oh, he's right. I don't know, it just felt like I was... I've been. This has got basically got work suspension on it, but right. yeah, it just felt like I was hitting. I was hitting the rocks as opposed to, and I'm not Going trying over to them. get any like get some come back from the GS community. You'll have split everyone now, fifty fifty. Well, I'll never, I'll never be able to go to Starbucks <laughs> ever again. Like, uh, but like <laughs> no, but I just the front suspension wasn't great off road, but the bike, I mean, it was fantastic. In fact, like I did, bear in mind, I did the Sahara Desert on it. 
yeah it was, it was great like really really good yeah 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 they are, they are I, good. What we, I can't remember what we talked about there but yeah there you go <laughs> um, i think it was fa- favorite bike but um yeah. have you have you ridden the new gen 3 ktm 1290 super duke adventure i'm not as popular as you mate i don't get to ride as many bikes so no i haven't Right, I will introduce you. I will introduce you to the PR folk for KTM then, because they'll they'll love you because you can ride off road. They give me these bikes, <laughs> and I'm just like, looks good. Put some mud on it. I don't know what to do. You know, like, if I do go off road, there's I'll definitely a video people. in this somewhere, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, the only reason I'm saying that is because that new Gen Three it has, um, it's got telelever suspension on it or self-leveling, so it's not telelever, but it's self-leveling, mm-hmm. so it rides very much like the GS. But you can switch that off if you want, and it just reverts to traditional front oh, forks. Really? Yeah, it's re- cool. yeah, it's really clever. Yeah. I did have quite a few gremlins with the electrics, though, I've got to say, with the electronics, but it's a press bike, so it's one of the first ones out there. So hopefully they're sorting I mean, that out. But no. And it's a KTM. You know, I'm yeah. a KTM yeah. groupie, but you know, the reason I've got so many tools behind me is because I own that thing. So. <laughs> it's character, is it not? Is that not a character? It is, yeah. So I've learned so much about bikes, mate, yeah. <laughs> um, right, next one. Harley, how's it, guys? You find yourself and a loved one shipwrecked on an island. This island has what it takes to live on indefinitely. Do you try and find a way back to civilization or embrace the island and stay? Oh, that's a good one. These, mate, these que- I wasn't expecting these questions. Yeah. Bugger all to do with bikes. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. I love it. <laughs> so, do I stay? When he says, what was it? He says, everything you've got to live. Is that what he said? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you get uh, you and a loved one shipwrecked on an island, and it's got everything you need. You need to live on it indefinitely. Do you get? Do you head back to civilization or just stay? Ooh. I mean, in my head, I'm imagining this like super awesome super cross track that goes on forever <laughs> on, a, on an island full of beautiful food and stuff. Uh, <laughs> food. Yeah, it, sound, yeah. it sounds like, yeah, I, I just got to tell you what I was saying there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds quite tempting that island, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. I why like why would wife. you want to? I mean, me and my wife get on really well. So, I mean, why not? Like, <laughs> like why would you want to come back to civilization if, if the island's got everything that you need? Why, why would you want to come back? I'm starting to feel like I don't fit this world as well, mate. I went to, I was at the Apple store today because my phone's playing up. I mean, I've never felt so out of place than being stood in an Apple store. <laughs> what the? What's going on in the world, mate? What's they, going on? <laughs> yeah. They look at you and talk to you like you're a Luddite, don't they? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's I'm, just like... Oh, it made God. me laugh because I'm only 35, right? And at work, I'm the tech guy. If anyone needs anything tech, they come to yeah. me. I go yeah. speak to one, he'll sort it out. In that shop, I couldn't have felt more archaic, like more ancient than being stood. I was like, I've got no snap. idea what you're even saying, mate. But yeah. yeah, snap. Yeah. And I find myself like, I've, I've chatted about this before in a podcast. Like when my dad asks me, you know, his email's not working or what's this mean on his computer or his iPad, his iPad's not doing this and it's not doing that. And I get really frustrated because I'm just like, fuck, every time I see you, I sort this out. You know, in my head, I'm like, every time I told I'm you. Bloody... <laughs> yeah. And so I get frustrated and then I have to think to myself, okay, hang on, you know, get different generations, isn't it? Yeah. But then my son is now like that with me. Like when I, if I'm with my, my boy and we're doing someone on the phone and he'll sort of laugh and just go, I can't believe you do that. And I'm like, what, what, what have I done? He says, why do you do it that way? It's, you know, it takes so long. And I'm like, it took me two seconds, three seconds. And he's like, I oh, know it's much quicker if you do it this way. And I'm like, well, what, what did you do? Slow that down. Yeah. What have you done? Show me, show me how you did it. Show me how you did it. Walk, yeah. walk me through it. Write it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, um, mate, 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 the times change. You've got to keep up. Oh, Back geez. to the question though. But I, th- I think I'd probably stay, mate. I don't really like people, so uh, no, I'm not joking. No, I'm not joking. No, um, no, 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 no. I think I'd, uh, I think I'd stay. It sounds sounds great, doesn't it? I think it sounds mega. Well, yeah. how, how do you get a ticket to this island, Harley? Yeah, yeah. Where is it? I Please. just want to know how big it is and if it has got a massive supercross track. But I mean, you know, we can we can come to you that. Commit one. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, you, you said you, you started to feel like you don't you don't belong. I, I can sympathise with that. Do you do you just sort of I mean, you're a military man, so you've got the capabilities. If push came to shove, say some mad Russian geezer pushes a button, right? And and we have we have this great reset everyone's talking about. Could you you can survive, couldn't you? 
you'd be able to survive. Mate, I was I was in the air force. I'd need a decent Hilton or, a, or you know something to. <laughs> Were you Raf Regiment? <laughs> no, I was not. No, I know. Oh, no, I, was right, right. I was a Lodi. I was a Lodi. Lodi, uh, Lodi, Lodi. I mean, they taught me some stuff, but I'm by no means some super army soldier. Uh, I like, yeah, I agree. I don't know. I'd, I'd probably stay on the island. Let's go back to the question before I dig myself a hole. I'd stay on the island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I would in all, to be honest. I don't yeah. really see what, why, if it's got everything you need, why, why would you want to leave? Hmm. Right. Yeah. Travel agents, I need to find this island. This island. <laughs> right. Last one of the Patreon questions. Simon Lewis. Hello, Bruce and Ollie. I have to admit, I've not seen Ollie's YouTube yet, so plenty to look forward to. I always admire the amazing work of the emergency services. What's the feeling like when you're lowered on the winch rope and you can you can never be prepared for the difficult call-outs? Sorry, what's the feeling like when you're lowered on the winch rope and you can never be prepared for the diff- difficult call-outs? Okay, so what's it like getting that buzz when you know you're, you're off to a shout? Do, do you ever get... Sorry, mate, go on. Sorry, there's a, a little bit of a delay. Um, do you yeah. ever, um, does it ever get old, that adrenaline rush? Because I remember in the old bill, going to a shout, like a 999 call with the woo-woos, the sirens and the blue lights, that never got old. You know, nearly 20 years and that still made me grin like a, you know, special whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> do, 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 does the adrenaline rush ever subside for your role? Uh I suppose no. It depends on what the job is, doesn't it? So if it's a run of the mill job, you're you're a bit like, okay, right, well, just run of the mill. Like like in any line of work, you are always always working one hundred percent to do your best for the patient, obviously. Mm. Uh, but no, it, it doesn't get old. You get used to it. So I remember when I was young in my SAR day, in my search and rescue day. Sorry, SAR is search and rescue for people who don't know. If I say SAR. So when I was on a yellow helicopter, when the bell went, I was like super excited every time, like a little kid bouncing around like a puppy. Whereas yeah, yeah, yeah. nowadays I'm not as much, but that that's only because I've learned through, and I'm not the most experienced SAR person by any means, but I've been doing it a little while. And uh, as you, you know, even though you said that it still sets you off, which it does when the sirens and stuff are going, you know, I, I do road ambulance work. You still tailor that excitement because you know that what you're going to is probably not what you're going to because thing, things never marry up. But I always get, I still get an adrenaline rush when I'm going, and that's good because it, it gets the senses firing, doesn't it? Because mm-hmm. sometimes in, in our job, in this search and rescue job, they only ask for a helicopter a lot of the time if someone's pretty poorly. So you have to be on your A game when you get there. So that burst of adrenaline is good because it'll wake you up and fire you up a little bit. But yeah, yeah, yeah still, it still excites me to go and do my job, definitely. I mean, I do, I'm very lucky to do a very cool job, but I, ne- I don't, if I link it to like winching out of a helicopter, I don't even think about that anymore. That's just a means to get somewhere. So that, that doesn't really tick my boxes anymore. I don't know. I don't want that to sound too like, but you know, like I'm just used to it. But I, I'd, I would still be like, I'd still be like, I'm in a helicopter. I've, I've never, I've <laughs> never been in a helicopter before in my life. So I'm just, have oh, you not? Must be, never. I was oh, like, that must oh, be the mate. coolest thing ever. I'd um, love to be able to say to you right now, oh, I'll get you flying, but it's so hard nowadays. In the military, yeah, if, if this was, if I was still in the military, I'd be like, come up tomorrow, mate, we'll sort you out. But it's hard nowadays because oh. legislations and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, mate, you're a few years too late. <laughs> I remember um, back, back uh, sadly, remember when the bombs went off in London, 2000, was that 2005? I remember um, yeah. we we were all up. I, I used to, I was in a public order unit in the Met then, um, but we we did CBRN stuff, you know, chemical, mm. biological. So we we were up at Glen Eagles for that, but <clears throat> obviously the bombs went off and um, a whole a whole load of people like Met that were up there basically had to get back to London ASAP. So they, they they basically got shipped to a military base and they were getting chucked into Chinooks and chucked into big transporters yeah. and just flown. But I was one of the ones that was told to stay at Glen Eagles. And I was just like, oh, oh. Oh, mate, a- that is <laughs> gutting. Yeah. yeah. The boys were driving the, you know, the riot vans into the back of these transporter planes. And it was just like, oh, that is so cool. Stuff, <laughs> stuff like that's cool, isn't it? Yeah, I oh, used to fly on Chinooks and sh- they, I mean, Fun, getting onto a Chinook's pretty cool because they make a lot of noise, don't they? So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we we did some work with the with, with the SAS one time. It was for um, I can't really give too many details away here, but uh, if there's a if there's a hostage situation on commercial aeroplanes, obviously the SAS do do their magic and 
you know, deal with it. So we, you have to work with them to run through some some drills and, and casualty handling and suspect handling and things like that. So we're, we were at an airbase, a military airbase, and you have your briefing. And I, I'll never forget, like, we had some real high-ranking brass from, uh, from the Met with us. And my unit that I used to work on, the, the public order unit, they were pretty much known as, they were called the TSG, Territorial Support Group, but they were also known as the Spice Girls and the Thick and Stupid Group, because it's basically... <laughs> If, if you need some, if you needed something like a door smashed in or like an entry, you sent us. And if you needed, if you needed a whole load of coppers to have a fight, then you sent you sent this lot. So that's basically what we were, knuckle draggers. But we were renowned for nicking stuff. Like if you, when you when you went to a nick, you you you'd try and nick the the flag from the top of the the station. Yeah, just yeah, whatever yeah. whatever you could lift, you would lift. And the uh, this, this sort of chief superintendent was like. Whatever you do, that hangar over there is out of bounds. Do not go in that hangar. <laughs> so what'd you do? <laughs> woo, woo, woo. I even go over that way, yeah. <laughs> Cup of coffee and some biscuits, straight off into the hangar. We went in and it was like all the SAS, you know, the SAS four by four Jeeps were in there and yeah, all the kits yeah. laid laid out. And then behind them was like the Apache gunships, and it was just like oh. Oh, I can't didn't it's touch like, anything. It's like the Matrix, isn't it? It's like that scene oh. from the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the stuff comes, yeah. <laughs> it was if just I was like... going to steal something, I probably wouldn't. If I was going to steal no. something from anyone, it probably no. wouldn't be from those lot. Yeah. Absolutely not. I, I remember, <laughs> like, later on, I moved into the firearms division within the old bill. And I remember I was doing, we were doing some training at one of the um, the bases that we had. And I was I was just sat on a cordon, you know, I was just sat on a cordon outside yeah. um, uh, an address. So I got my gun up like that. And then the next thing, <clears throat> there was like another stick of military turned up. And it was the SAS guys, because they were all training, ready to go out to, to uh, Afghan. So they they did like an assault storm on a building to our left. <laughs> there's, there's me with my little like 1972 MP5 that we used. <laughs> you know? hey, and good, then, good guns, though. They're good guns. They're all right, yeah. Solid, reliable <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. But I remember looking at these SAS guys and I was just like, you're 12? They, they, were, they all looked so young, like mid twenties. <laughs> but they just, to me, it was like you can't be sass. You look like kids. This is incredible. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyway, different life, different life. Um, <laughs> yeah, reminiscing, mate. Reminiscing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Simon's got a second question. I really fancy hitting the enduro scene. What advice would you give a novice that you've learned through your own adventures, and the beginner and the beginner's bike to go for? So, advice and best bike. For enduro. So I, I'd start by saying I'm not really an, an enduro rider. And in case people are watching, they're a bit confused with different. So adventure bike riding and off-road big bike adventure bike riding, or even green laning is a bit different from enduro, but I'm assuming yeah. he's using the term. I think he means oh, just yeah, off-roading. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah. So, um, so I used to, I've just sold, uh, again, for boring grown-up reasons, because I need a new boiler. I've just sold <laughs> uh, a Husky, a Husky 350. Nice. And I bought a 350 because my mate Allard uh, from, from Full HD, he's a rally rider, rally instructor, really, really good bloke and capable rider. It's quite uh, handy on a I bike, said, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, um, uh, uh, if Allard's watching, hi, Allard. But yeah, I, um, I've ridden with lots of people. I've been lucky that, especially doing youtube stuff, you get to ride with loads of people. But I've never ridden with anyone as quick as that boy. Um, hmm. he's, he's fast. He's a different level of fast. But anyway... I was, I had the exact same question for him when I was looking at enduro bikes. So I was riding this still, but he told me to get a 350 and I, that's the bike that I'd recommend to people. So mm -hmm. it depends if this, who was the guy's name? Sorry, is it? Uh, Simon. Simon, Simon, Simon Lewis. Simon. So if Simon's looking to do adventure riding and get a big adventure bike, then a midway, I'd recommend like a midway T7 Tenere sort of bike mm -hmm. uh, would be a good one or a 690. People like 690s, but it's a KTM. So as long as you know how to use spanner. Um, <laughs> But, but for a, a starting off bike, then I thought the 350 engine was perfect. So a 250, mm -hmm. people were like, why don't I get a really small engine like a 250? You have to use it more. You've got to use the gears yeah. more. So it's a bit harder work. On the other end of the scale, a 450, you, you're a lazy rider because you can just chug everywhere. So you don't right. actually learn to ride as much. This is what Allah told me and I listened to him. Uh, but a 350 is like an in-between. So you can chug it when you're tired. You can zing it when you need to. And it's sort of, it's, it, I found it a really easy to ride forgiving bike. It still mm -hmm. threw me off a few times, but I thought it was a great engine, great bike. Uh, so I'm, that's cool. But I mean, it depends. Like the Sierra 300 nowadays is like the bike to get, isn't it? Everyone says, yeah, everyone's got that. Yeah. My, my neighbor Barney, who you may have seen in my stuff, he lives 
five doors that way and he bought that because of my recommendation and that bike's cracking because it sort of ticks loads of boxes that crf 300 yeah yeah definitely i think yeah. it's really cheap at the moment as well i think it's like five and a half grand isn't it six grand well, yeah like and he bought his brand, brand new, new five yeah. grand brand new it was they've gone up in price a bit now because of covid yeah. tax and all the rest of it but uh yeah five grand brand new and you saw yourself boost mate did you ride the trail at the at the abr did you go around the loop no 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 i, I was um, literally i was there for uh, did I even? No, I didn't even stay overnight. I was I was there for the, oh, the really? afternoon. That was it. I had to do a talk. Friday, and, wasn't it? You were there. I yeah, saw yeah. you on Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I just uh, when I turned up, mate, you were first, but you had to miss, aren't you? You're a big bloke. You got a big beard, <laughs> so I uh, so, But yeah, the, the those CRF fringes were everywhere. They were everywhere. Yeah, this isn't this isn't a plug, no, no, you know, at all. But I I always film a lap when I'm there. And if you watch the one from this year, you'll just see. I even comment on it. The CRF three hundred is just bloody everywhere. everywhere uh, so yeah. I mean, that's probably a good bike to go for, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. It's quite forgiving. I think the that, the three hundred was the one I used at um, Salisbury Plain with Phoenix, and yeah, mm. it's it's a really forgiving and easy bike to ride. I rode yeah. the the Husky three fifty. I rode that at. Have you been out to Toro Toro Trail down in southern Spain? Have you done no, that? No, I know of them, but I've not been yet. Okay, <laughs> might have something I can chat to you actually about after off yeah, camera. Yeah, um, yeah that, that's what they use. They've got a whole fleet of Husky three fifties. And then they have got a whole fleet of the GSs as well, twelve fifty GSs. So they'll they'll go off road on both lots of bikes, and then they do like road tours on the GSs as well. But um, yeah, I did I did some off road on the the three fifty. But I just found I just felt I just felt like a a, a massive <laughs> ape on this tiny little. Bike. I know what you're going to say. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. with the symbols. <laughs> 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 I wasn't implying you're a monkey, but you know, if you want to, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just felt I felt like I couldn't when I was stood up, I was thrown over the, the handlebars, and then I couldn't I just I just found I couldn't I couldn't balance properly on the bike. I could never I could never get the balancing right because I was either falling back and revving forward or falling forward and like not giving enough juice. Whereas it's, with the GSs, really I feel funny. like I can grip it. Well, this is it. It's really funny to say. So I don't know if you know the Trail and Adventure motorbike podcast that, that Clive Barber does. He's a mate of mine. No. So I was on his and we did a big bikes versus small bikes chat. And obviously mm -hmm. I was on team big bikes, being a big bike guy. Uh, and that's exactly what I said. That was one of my main points is that on the little bikes, I felt like I was like on the little bike, whereas I feel like I'm part of this when I'm riding yeah. it, if that makes yeah. sense. Like, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I can feel what this bike's doing more as the little bikes. It's only due to lack of talent. I'm not blaming mm. the bikes, but I just find I get on better with these. Well, I would say to Simon, just sorry, mate, just to, on the what bike to get, have a look at service schedules. That's a good one. So if you're not someone who likes tinkering uh, with bikes, 350s and bikes like that are enduro, sort of they're road legal, but they're full on enduro bikes. So you need to change pistons and stuff. Well, or get somebody to change a piston a lot more often. So mm. maybe you want to get an old bomb proof bike like a TTR 250 or a CR 400. The new ones are pretty good for service schedules. Yeah, so. yeah. That, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, check that out, Si. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, yeah. I I found that I I just couldn't balance on a little bike at all. When it comes to what you said, with a big bike, you kind of you feel part of it. You sort of you know, even with the G, even with the the GS, felt much more natural for me to to stand up on and ride off road. Whereas with the the Husky, <clears throat> I was okay if I sat that when I was sat down. Then I didn't mind giving it, you know, big guns on the throttle and shooting off. Well, to my ability anyway, but I just couldn't, I couldn't ride fast stood up because I could never, ba I just couldn't balance on the thing. I was. Yeah. No, I, I, that echoes with me. Like, and I, I'm all right-ish off-road, but I still find the little bikes, they're easier to ride because they're lighter and they're more mm. forgiving. But I just never felt like I was like in harmony with the bike ever, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, unless I was sat down around a motocross track then it felt all right, but... <laughs> Right, that's uh, I that's that helped, Simon. I hope that helped anyway. We've waffled a bit, but I hope that gave him some sort of answer. <laughs> and I'm sure if, if he needs any more advice, Simon, either DM me or DM Ollie, make sure you're following him and um, we'll keep you right. Right, that is us done with the clan questions. So uh, we'll head across to Instagram now, which is at teapot one insta, and I'll leave all Ollie's links down below. Thanks, mate. Mate, do you need a toilet break or anything like that? Mm -mm. Are you all right for time? I'm all good. I'm cracking. I'm cracking on through these beers, so I'll keep talking more and more nonsense. I'm currently, if anyone cares, I'm on this now. This Another Goose fruity island. Another fruity. What, I don't know if you could read it. Hazy IPA, far out and fruity. It's very fruity. Ooh, this is go on, describe thing. it to us. It's, it's, a, it can, it's a scent of elderflower 
I don't know, I don't know. It just tastes fruity, mate. But <laughs> Hollyhops and fruit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Me again, folks. Just a short one this. We are also sponsored this month by the Influencer Store. If you go to teapot1.com, you'll go to the shop, check out any of the merchandise that I have available. That is all handled by the Influencer Store right here in the UK. I've got a quick bit of blurb to read out for them, and that is... The Influencer Store helps you build your brand, big or small, providing you with a solution and apparel. We help you to increase your fan base while supporting you with starting your own influencer clothing line with nothing more than just an idea or design. And there are no hidden costs. For more info, come check us out at theinfluencerstore.co.uk or drop us an email at online at influencerstore.co.uk for more information. Make sure you check them out, folks. Head to teapot1.com, head to the show, head to the shop. And you'll be supporting both the Teapot One channel and the podcast right here if you buy anything from the merchandise. So a massive thanks in advance to you and a huge thanks to the Influencer Store. And lastly, folks, I just want to say a massive thank you to you. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast, for watching the vids, for commenting, for liking, for sharing, for following and subscribing. It all is a massive, massive help. We're on a bit of an upturn at the moment. The podcast is gathering momentum. The channel is certainly doing really well. So a huge thanks to everybody who's been involved with that. If you want to go that extra mile, then you can always buy some merch over at teapot1.com. Or if you really want to get committed, you can join the clan over at patreon.com forward slash teapot1. All links for everything are down below, folks. I appreciate any support in any form you can give. All right, then. That's enough with the bag and bowl. Let's get back to the podcast. Um, right, we've got, there's one question on uh, Insta, I think. Think I thought there was I thought there was like seven on Insta. What what's going on there? Let me just refresh the page and make sure. I thought there were loads of ones over on Instagram. Uh, nope, there's one. Okay, right. G Ohms, your time has come to shuffle off this mortal coil. You close your eyes, everything turns red. Ten foot letters appear saying "Game over." What game stats about your life would you love to see? Oh wow. I love this kind of question. I love this. So deep. Do you know what? I listen, obviously we all listen to the radio. And when I hear celebrities answering questions like this, I always think, God, I'm glad I don't have to answer questions like that. Yeah. Like <laughs> chatter. And then here I am, right on a motorbike podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've hardly chatted about bikes yet. What stats would I like to see? Do you know what? Do you know the one stat that would make me feel, feel happy about myself? If it just said 100% good lad. <laughs> like that, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was, he was a decent. Like you can blend that into whatever you like. He was a good lad. He wasn't a dickhead. He was nice to people. You know, he was a good lad. He did some cool stuff. He made people happy. Good lad. Yeah. There you go. And that's all you can hope, though, isn't it? That yeah, is all yeah. you can hope for in life. Because I go. Um, pa- I try to. I try to live by the mantra: "Don't be a dick." But you know, I'm not yeah. saying I. I'm not saying I always reach that goal. But uh, yeah. So if, if he if it said he's a good lad, I'd be happy with that. Are you Are you a spiritual person? No. No. no, are you very much black and white? Nah, That's it. Uh, well, Common sense. I'm a, I'm a bit like, you know, don't, don't, don't mind either way. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm quite, I suppose, sciencey and stuff, but mm. I'm not anti-religion. I was brought up religious. I was brought up as a Roman Catholic kid. Were you? Yeah, yeah. I went to a Roman Catholic school, but mm. I didn't like lose religion or anything. I just sort yeah. of didn't keep it up. If I'm allowed to say that without offending people, <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, like I, 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 I wasn't. You know, I was, I was always. I think I I was always an atheist. I would say for sure. And now I don't I don't I don't I don't know I don't know anymore. To be honest, I just I think obviously in your line of work and in my previous line of work, you you do deal with death. And I, I've I it always struck me that when you saw someone that had passed, that they weren't they weren't human anymore. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but like. The person's gone, isn't it? It's it's yeah, just a, it's yeah. a vessel that's left, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. it's weird. And even when you see, like, obviously, when my mum passed away, you could see that you know the the, the person the person is not there anymore. And I remember just thinking, well, wh- wh- where'd you go? What happens after that? Yeah, I'd never think about it. No, no, I do. I do. I'd love to. I'd love to be religious and think that I'm going to go somewhere else, but I've just not been mm. able to, I'm too, I'm too logical at the moment. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And again, I'm trying really hard not to offend people here because nowadays we offend everyone. Don't we? I'm, I'm not trying to, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've dealt, unfortunately I've dealt with a lot of death in my job. So yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. I, was, I know exactly what you mean, but 
what I, what I do believe in though massively is when it's your time it's your time Hi. so I've uh, I've seen um, I used like I said I used to work in Scotland in the big hills up that way uh, and even on the road ambulance work or whatever and down there every now and again some people will get themselves into a massive accident or fall down a big hill and mm. I, like, I remember picking up one guy in Scotland he'd fallen he tumbled 400 feet down a mountain and that's no exaggeration 400 feet down a mountain and he'd all he'd done was dislocate his shoulder and he had a hole in his shin what whereas whereas um i'm trying not to get myself into trouble by by giving out patient details here but yeah, whereas yeah, I've, yeah. I've gone to patients that have tripped and, and and fallen from head height to the floor and caused themselves massive damage yeah so i do believe that if it's your time it's your time it's it, it amazes me sometimes what i turn to go how have you got yourself into this state from there or mm-hmm. the opposite how are you not dead from yeah. there so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the yeah, human but... bodies, the human bodies, just an incredible thing, isn't it? And that, in as exactly what you've just said, it can sustain catastrophic damage and still survive, but it can be so Watch fragile. The horn. Watch the, the horn. horn. Have you seen the horn on Netflix? It's a program called the horn. Nothing to do with bikes, people. Sorry, but it's it's the Matterhorn <laughs> and it's the air rescue services. Watch the horn. Yeah, sorry, it's to do with medicine. Medicine. I... Yeah. I thought you said watch the whore. I was like, what? I don't know, no, no, the horn, but even the horn could work, mate. Yeah, but get your mind out of the gutter, Bruce. Right, yes. Yeah, so Scottish. On Netflix, the horn. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. uh, then then you'll see see what I mean by yeah, people that you're like, how are you alive? But there you go. I'll check that out then. I'm always looking for something decent to watch on. I, I kind of I, I go on there and I watch like the things everyone's talking about. And then you're like, well, what else is there? And I'm just like, ah, oh, scrap, 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 scrap. And yeah. you just end up thinking, well, when's the next thing coming out that I can watch? How do you have time to watch TV, mate? I don't have time to watch TV. Well, because I don't have I don't have any kids down here. You know, my son's 25 and he's got his own place and lives up in Scotland. So he, yeah, yeah. he doesn't live with me. And I've I've got in I've tried to get into the habit now of come sort of five o'clock, half five, that's it. Um I don't I don't work in the evenings, whereas yeah. I used to I used to be working like 18, 20 hours a day, seven days a week. And you just get you just get fecked off with everything then, you know, like the <laughs> you do though, don't you? Because like the, yeah, no, the you do, you're absolutely right, mate. I I was editing the passion last night goes. At work. Yeah, yeah. But even the editing, I was editing mm. till half ten last night at work because I do 24 hour shifts. So I was doing some editing mm. at work and uh and but then you just go to bed thinking about your editing, don't you? So yeah, it's nice yeah. to switch off, mate. I just need to take yeah. some some notes from your book, I think. Well, it was um, <laughs> it was Chase on Two Wheels. You know him, the American moto vlogger. No, I don't know. Never heard of Chase. He's, he's no. massive. He's got like a million odd subs. Well, he he I came on the podcast. Him, yeah. <laughs> he came on the, the podcasts back in, in the early days, one of the first episodes, and I remember him saying that to me. He was like, you know make sure you establish a work-life balance. And he was the one that said, I think it was five o'clock or six o'clock. As soon as that comes, that's it. He doesn't, he doesn't work weekends. Obviously, if you've got a, if you've got a tight deadline coming up for a, you know, a vid that has to get out, then yeah, you, you put in the graft, but otherwise he's like nine to five, boom, that's it. And then he spends time with his wife and make sure that he's got a life outside. And I remember thinking, because I was full on, I'd not, I'd not long gone full time, and I was just like, Jesus, no way, I'm throwing everything I've got at this. But he's right, he's totally right. Because you just get, you just get fucked off with it. You start chasing, yeah, yeah. you start chasing the figures, don't you? Know, I don't know if you do that, but you're, you're constantly no, looking at. I try not to, but it's, but I have, I, so I, I don't really chase the figures in the fact that that's why probably my channel's not massive because I, I don't chase the figures, but I do look at my phone about every 30 seconds just mm-hmm. as a habit which is terrible isn't it yeah but like, I'm it's exactly so. works nowadays yeah i yeah. remember um I, I was on a podcast <clears throat> not not long into the first lockdown <clears throat> and uh, they were chatting about screen time on their phones and i was like what what's you know i was the old boy i, I was like my, i won't look at it i refuse i was like what what is that so they told me and i'm on the podcast and i looked and my like theirs were like 6 7 hours and i'm like oh that's terrible god i can't believe i do that i look i'm not kidding you mine was like 22 23 hours and they they looked at me like i just pooed on their grandma's face you know they just looked at me like you're a disgusting human being. <laughs> like, yeah. Do you spend any time God. off your phone? You just live on your phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I might have an issue. Jesus. Yeah, I need to have a word of myself. Yeah, 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 definitely. So um, with the channel then, what's the plans? 
Do you know what, mate? I don't know. So, uh, so I love I love doing the YouTube stuff, but like I said, it's got to be on your terms a little bit, hasn't it? So mm. I try and although I said I was editing late at night, that's only because I was at work, and uh, you know we do twenty four hour shifts, so I have a bit of time every now and again. But I don't really know, mate. So I like what I like doing is going on adventures, mm-hmm. and I think they make the best movies, and I think I capture adventure stuff better than I capture other stuff just because yeah. it's sort of our role. So I'd like to do more of that, but obviously that's easy to say, hard to do, isn't it? Because you've got to go mm. on an adventure, yeah. pay for an adventure, yeah. find time yeah. to go on an adventure. Uh, but I don't really know, mate. I, at the moment, I've got a couple of reviews on the back burner that have been on the back burner for a while, and I've got a, com- a couple of companies saying, mate, we sent that kit a long time ago, so I need to really pull my finger out. But yeah, I, I honestly don't know, mate. Like, I just sort of roll with the punches and go with the flow. I, re- I, I like making adventure stuff. So at the moment, I've prioritised the that adventure spec weekend that one of the guys messaged in about. Mm-hmm. which is a right laugh so i went away i've known those lot for a while just through chatting through whatsapp and stuff that's where social media media is massively positive and i met these people yeah. through instagram and now we're like good mates and go ride and have a right laugh so i've been editing that recently and that's the sort of stuff i like because i'm in hysterics whilst i'm editing it because it's just funny to watch back because we just had a right laugh and yeah. that's what people like to watch so more of that but yeah i don't know mate i've got a couple of plans for next year for some big adventures i've got a. Uh, some bike reviews and stuff coming up. Some some companies are sending me some stuff. Some of the bikes that you've already reviewed, but uh, see how that goes. I, I, like I said, I roll with the punches and see where mm-hmm. life takes me. I should probably have more of a structure, but this doesn't without sounding really <clears throat> boring. This doesn't pay my mortgage, so exactly, I have to, I have to privatize because I've got my own medical business and stuff. So I have to privatize mm-hmm. all of that stuff, and this comes on the side. But and normally, this is what I enjoy doing the, the most. You know, uh, I, like, I, I you know, totally like get it. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I totally get it. It's when everyone talks about this, when your passion becomes your job, then y- you can quite easily lose some of the passion for it. And I, th- I think, careful, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I did for for a little we certainly for the, the sort of early part of this year, I was really quite just despondent with it. And I was just like, oh, I don't know if I can do this for, forever. You know, you kind of the effort that goes into like the trip vids, you know, yourself, it's a lot yeah. of work, you know, it's a lot of work when you're out doing the trip and you're filming and it's a lot of work in the edit for, for, for quite a small return really. Cause they just don't get, they don't get anywhere near the views that like a bike review would get or something like that. And so <coughs> conversely, you don't, you don't earn much in terms of YouTube revenue from that. And then I'll, I'll you look at, I look at some other channels and, you know, they're just really, really basic, but they're they're ticking off the, the like the in vogue things at that time or at the moment. Th- this is just pure jealousy on my part. You know, it's there's a lot of young ladies, young young women coming in. Well, of course, uh, w- what are you going to look at? You're going to look at the fat geezer with the beard, or you're going to look at you know a, a nice young lass. Obviously, they're going to get the views, and it and it just really started getting to me and. And that's not that's not a healthy place to be. So, so I've sort of moaned, not moaned. I sort of moped around and felt sorry for myself for a while, and then you just suddenly start going. But well, you know what? Fair play to him. Fair play to anyone that that is doing it. Fair play to anybody that has sussed it out and is figuring out this whole YouTube thing. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, it's 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 down to us, isn't it? It's down to us to to figure it out and work on your advantages however you want to whether you want to grow your channel whether you want to go for big views or whether you just want to tick it along so it's a you know it's it's a it's a, a hobby but you're you're creating like you specifically you're creating shit hot content it really is good quality stuff be proud of that how did you teach I yourself that mate uh, and i have youtube generally youtube yeah so um, uh, it's really nice that you say that because I, uh, I don't want to chuck, chuck smoke up my own backside, but I try and concentrate on quality over quantity because yeah. going back yeah. to what you just said, if you want to get massive, you've got to just, I know what you were saying earlier in the first in the conversation, but still you need to be putting out regular content. I think my last video was like over a month ago and that's not good mm. for, for growing channels and stuff, is it? But mm. Yeah, I think, and I don't want this to sound by any means a whinge because we choose to do this, don't we, Bruce? We choose mm-hmm. to do this. We can't whinge about it. Absolutely, but yeah. I, don't, I do think people don't realise the graph that goes into this. And even going back to what you said, you know, the girls that are getting all the views, and rightly so, I completely agree with you because that's what I prefer to look at. Sorry, mm-hmm. mate, as much as I'm enjoying this chat, that's what I prefer <laughs> to look at. Um, but I know a couple of those girls personally, you know, that that do that stuff. And mm-hmm. I don't think people realise 
they the put amount in the graft of graft they put in yeah the, yeah but yep. not just not just a little bit of graft like massive amounts of work goes into what yep. they're doing you yep. know and they're just they're just playing to their advantages which is great mm-hmm. that's what it should be doing a fair play to them and they're still growing the sport aren't they and yeah, doing yeah. That stuff. so i've got no beef with it but everyone i think everyone goes through that I, genuinely i think everyone goes through exactly what you just said yeah. you start to get a bit popular and then you're not getting as popular as everyone else. And you're like, why not? And you get really grumpy. And I still yeah. go through like yeah. a sine wave or that sort of stuff where I get like <laughs> flipping tables with it, yeah. throwing laptops yeah. out the window. It's not that I've ever done it, you know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> but, then you, but then you come back to exactly what you just said. You think, well, fuck it. What does it matter? Just crack on, mm. do what you're doing. People will enjoy it if they enjoy it. Yeah, um, yeah it, is, it is hard. <laughs> it is hard work like for full HD when I put my life and soul into that and a lot of money as well. And, uh, and it doesn't take off. That's a little bit like, I wish it I- just... Not not to get any money back, but just just I don't need hugs. I'm not a huggy. I'm not someone who needs to be told, "Oh, we well done, mate." But just a little like that would have done yeah. Like, yeah. A, a little bit of recognition yeah. for the, yeah, for the exactly. effort that's yeah. gone into it. I, yeah. I genuinely think, mate. Honestly, I think that full HD series that is going to be a slow burner, and at some point that is going to take off. Alan genuinely, and I were really, we were really. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not disappointed, but we were surprised, whatever the negative form of surprised is, that it didn't take off just because mm. of who was on board. So, you know, we put, he he put a lot of graft into that behind the scenes, getting all mm. the sponsorship. And we had like Fox suspension, the yeah. Fox suspension <laughs> sent, sent us a product to be their European launch. You know, two bloody idiots building a bike in a garage. Right, lads, we're putting our faith in you and we let them down by not making the race uh, not to spoil the uh, to spoil the series of people but um, uh, mate, we, we're yeah. missing a trick here for for anyone that's not seen it can you explain full HD yeah in fact we, we've not even, I'm enjoying this chat so much I forgot we've not even talked about it. yeah so full no. HD is um, Alad my mate Alad he lives in America now he used to be in Wales uh, he is Welsh he phoned me in lockdown lockdown one how many, I don't know how many lockdowns we had. Lockdown one. I remember exactly where I was stood. I was in my old house, stood in a garage. We used to FaceTime all the time. Uh, the phone went, hello, mate, you're right. I've got an idea. Bear with me. I was like, yeah, go on. I want to take a <laughs> 1992 Harley Davidson and I want to build it into a rally bike and I want to go and race it at the Hellas Rally in Greece. And if people don't know what all of that means, watch episode one at least of the series and it explains everything, just so I don't have to do it all now. It's but like the first just, five minutes, folks, honestly. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. And, but the Hellas Rally is like, it's not like a, you know, a couple of blokes going, this not the top rally riders in the world, Dakar riders go and do the Hellas Rally. It's part of a series, etc. Watch the series, it takes. But anyway, he phoned me and I was like, yeah, that sounds stupid enough for me to be interested. Let's do it. And then... Alad at the time had a habit, or probably still still does, has a habit of getting excited about things and maybe they don't all come to fruition. Not, And I don't want that to come out in a negative sense. He's just an excitable character, uh, which is a, always a positive thing. But, a puppy. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then a week later, he sent me a picture of the Harley Davidson in his van driving home. I was like, oh, so we're actually doing it then. Right, okay. Uh, and yeah, so we took this 1992 Harley Davidson Sportster, which when we bought it was essentially standard other than a paint job it had like six inch suspension on the rear. It was a, it was a 92 Harley Davidson, you know, mm-hmm. it's not meant for rallies. Uh, we got a load of sponsors, but I say we, the Royal we, Alad did a lot of graph, getting a lot of sponsors on board. I did a bit in the background. Um, uh, and then we built it into a rally bike and it turned out uh, to be a one hell of a, <laughs> an undertaking, shall we say. So logistically, Alad lived four hours away from me in Wales and I'm a busy boy anyway. So trying to link up to get that done and to film and, you know, he had to learn how to film. I had to do loads of traveling. Uh, we did a lot of spannering together. He did most of it because it was at his house. But it was just a massive project. And we say in the series, you know how you watch, you watch series on TVs, bike build stuff, car build stuff, anything. They always make it sound like it goes down to the wire. And you're like, yeah, mm-hmm. this is just a bit like Top Gear. Top Gear is a yeah, bit yeah, yeah. put on. But you think, yeah, yeah. No, no, this went down to the wire. But watch the series anyway. I'm not, honestly, go and watch it. Please watch it. It took me a long time to make. Uh, uh, but, I, yeah, we built a uh, killer bike. We built a killer bike. It didn't didn't quite go to plan without spoiling too much. But hey, you can't win them all, can you? But we still built a killer bike. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm really happy with the series. And one day maybe it will continue. But I'd like it to. But we'll see. 
I've I've got to admit, right? I I I'd seen your name crop up. Other people had said to me, "Oh, you you need to you need to get this bloke on the podcast. Uh, check out his bids; they're really good." Blah 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 blah. And I'd I'd never done it. I'd never looked right. And and um, I I think I think I I caught one videos or something on social media, and I thought, "Oh, he looks a good fella. What is this all this about?" And we'd have a chat yeah. anyway. I think you commented on something, and I was like, "Ah, yeah." People, I thought to myself, loads of people have said you'd be good on a podcast. So I was like, right, come on the podcast. And That's then I, I, I thought to myself, I better watch some vids and see, just have have an idea. So I, I saw this full HD was the first thing that I, I saw. So I went on oh, episode one. I'm not kidding you. I think by episode two or three, I binge watched everything. And I think by episode three, one of them I commented on and I was just like, how the fuck has this not got more views than it's got? Yeah, I saw your comment. Yeah. You know, they've got like, what, 11, 12, 15,000, something like that, views. Well, like, um, you know, bear in mind, one of my videos has got over a million views. This full HD series, one of them's got 500 views, you know. They're like low viewing figures. I don't know why. Really? I, and I'm really surprised it didn't take off. Again, not from any, you know, I don't, I don't need to be famous sort of thing. But I was just, I was just surprised that it didn't, especially because it's a Harley Davidson. You know what the, you know, the family yeah. of Harley people are, like, and the people we it's had. It's your on titles. Board. It's your titles and thumbnails. I'll tell you right yeah, now. Yeah, it, it probably mm. is. Yeah, I tried to make it sound a bit quirky and funky, but mm. uh, thinking that it would take off anyway, so I didn't, I wouldn't have yeah. to play the yeah. YouTube game. Whereas, yeah. in hindsight, that was a mistake. But yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm not absolutely. going to change it now. It is what it is, but you'd be surprised. <laughs> just, you, you you can you yeah. can give videos a second life by changing. It it takes exactly. it normally yeah it takes it can take four to six weeks for for that to kick in. But if you if you retitle, redo the thumbnail, obviously do some SEO in the in the. Although they they talk about the description, but a lot of vids I look at with massive viewing figures, they've got nothing in the blooming description. It's just title thumbnail. Boom, yeah. there must be tags. That's I it. mean, I, and I get what you're saying, and I probably, I probably should, but then, like, even in the edit, is in in the video, the names and stuff are all in there. I don't know. I'm like a, I like it to be original. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I know what you mean. Probably, yeah. probably shoot myself in the foot here, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, make sure you check out fully. I will leave. If you listen to the podcast, check out the show notes. If you're watching the video, have a look at the vid description and I'll leave a hyperlink there straight to episode the whole playlist for full HD. If you do nothing else. Watch that. It's mint. Thanks, that, Bruce, mate. I appreciate that. Yeah. Mate, honestly, I, I, I was staggered. I, I get it. I get people still to this day messaging me about the world uh, playlist, just going, I can't believe that's not got more views. But I'm like, I, that was with that. Mate. I looked the other day and I was like, how's this not got more views? Like, yeah, like, it looks, I'm, I'm... It's dated, though, isn't it? It's really dated. Uh, I think you've got, uh, people like that, though, mate. I, I watched a few because I'll, I'll admit as well, mate, us, us YouTubers are always busy. If I've got... <laughs> it was filmed <laughs> on that. Good lad. <laughs> But if we've got spare time, we're normally editing, not watching other people's videos. That's how the world works, isn't it? But um, I, was surprised. I looked at yours. I was like, why has this not got more viewings? Just because of what it is. But I mean, mm. I don't know. Some some things are weird, don't they? Some things take off. Some things don't. I don't know. I just Mate, I, I look at I look at it, I look at like itchy boots now, and I'm just like, oh god, you know, like yeah. drones and high HD, well, 4K cameras, everything that we've got now. And you're like, oh, I'd love to do the trip again, and just. And just mm -hmm. film it all. It'll be amazing yeah. to do that. But I will. Never mind. It is done. Um, cool. It got you to right. where you are, mate. It got you to where you are. So it's all good. Do you know yeah. it was... Um, do you know my favourite video of yours still is when you wrapped on the coppers. When you left the coppers, that video, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, I, the rebel in me I was left. like, yeah, go yeah, on, yeah, lad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like so many, not just the coppers that I work with in the Met, but so many coppers from around the world. Yeah, like, I think every cop was the same. Everyone's just like the job's fucked. <laughs> the, pu the, pu <laughs> the, the public are shit. It's just they, they hate the job. They hate the public. <laughs> um, so many coppers got in touch with me, just going, "I wish I could do that." Fair play to you. Like, good on you. So it takes it takes some stones to do that, mate. Yeah, fair play. It was it was a weird it was a weird decision. I, and again, I think my my wife. My my wife's been a, an absolute rock for me since I met her. Like we we met after I'd planned the world trip, so you know she knew I was disappearing for a year and a half, two years, and she stood by me the whole way, and she stood by me all these years through all this. And it was my wife that turned around to me and said, "When 
they did that to me at work and gave me the ultimatum, you know, like they basically gave me an ultimatum, either finish yeah. everything on YouTube and social media and stay in the old bill, or we're going to throw the book at you. And the, all they could do, all they could do is just give me a, a letter that said, keep your nose clean for three years. That That's the most they could do. But they could tell me to stop all social media, everything. I couldn't even rebrand. And yeah. I just thought to myself, I've, I've sort of, I've put too much into the whole teapot one brand and life and i get more from that than i did from the job from the old bill like wow. all the old bill did was just give me grief and i just thought you know what if we can make a go of it and my wife just said to me she said just just go you know just just try a year wow. like we can survive off of off uh, her money if we needed to just go for it so it's like okay <laughs> so, but even we'll how see. you've said it mate even how you've just told the story and if people haven't watched that video of yours they need they definitely yeah. need to go watch it but even though you've just you've just made it sound so simple haven't you like yeah yeah just you know just but it's still a mat that's a massive thing to do it's a huge thing to do yeah, but, and, yeah. and you did yeah. it so fair play mate yeah it was oh, good thanks man with that yeah. i'm very black and white with stuff like that you know I'm, I'm i've become a bit of a hippie with with a lot of other things in life but that sort of stuff i'm just like okay right you, you make the decision then go for it see how you get on yeah. if it doesn't work it doesn't work Try something else. So, uh, you yeah. know, if I, if I end up having to get a job driving for Tesco's, I'll I'll do that. But, you know, at the moment, I'm surviving. So <laughs> we shall my see. My mate did that. During COVID, my mate, who's a pilot, lost his pilot job on the airlines. He drove mm-hmm. for Tesco's. He loved driving for Tesco's. So, hey, don't, don't knock it. Sounds like a great job. <laughs> there was there was somebody else, somebody else I know through... There's a few people, actually. Ben King. Do you remember Ben King? King on the road. Oh, you can't forget Ben King. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was doing that, wasn't he? He was, he was, dri- he was driving for... Um, Waitrose, obviously. It wasn't Tesco's. It was Waitrose. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. King Gallon, yeah. And then uh, my mate Aaron, um, he he was doing that as well. He was, I think it was Tesco's or Asda. He was, a lot of people I know did it during lockdown. Yeah. It's just, yeah, just doing their thing, wasn't it? Um, dude, we've got no more questions, but uh, I could sit and chat to you for bloody all night. Um, is there anything you want to cover? <sighs> specifically? I mean, what, what do you want to talk about? I mean, I mean... I don't want to sit and burn all of your time, but I'm equally in no rush because I'm sat in, in a happy place in a garage drinking beer and I've got loads of beers left in my little beer fridge, mate. So whatever you want to do. And you're working. <laughs> uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're working at the moment. This yeah, is this work. Is, yeah, yeah. If the tax man's concerned, I mean, these are going on the bill. Yeah, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, then. So in terms of bikes, what what's planned for the future? Is there anything you can talk about? Like, have you got any trips or any other projects? So I've up? got, I don't like, I don't like talking about what I'm going to do. Not that I, I'm trying to be, oh, look at this mysterious, but I find I've done, I've burnt myself before by saying, mm-hmm. oh, I'm going to do this and stuck it all over social media. Then something's happened and I've not gone away and you just yeah. look like an idiot. So I've got, um, I've got a few, a few trips planned. So I'm going away in, in a week uh just just for a very mini trip but it'll mm-hmm. still be some content and it'll be uh, i'm not doing it for that sounded wrong i'm not doing it for content but there will be content on the back of it i'm doing it for yeah, the yeah. trip uh so that'll be fun and then nothing really else for the rest of this year but next year if all goes to plan you know i'll have all the normal stuff going on but i've got two massive trips planned for next year which will be a wicked trips to go on as an individual just going on them but you know, all the good stuff will come of it, of loads of media and videos and mm-hmm. all that stuff, all the good stuff that people like to sit and watch. So yeah, and they, and they are massive trips. But I don't want to say any more, Bruce. Not again. I just don't want to don't want to jinx myself. <laughs> so I'm not going to say anything. But other than that, um, I'm going to do a lot of stuff in this. I've sold my little bike, so this is my main bike and my only bike now off road. Yeah. So I've got. I want to strip this down over the winter and do some work on it. I've got a couple of ideas for series I want to do. My track bike, I want to turn the camera around, but it looks a bit messy, but I've got my track bikes here. I've got really got back into my track bike, and so I'll be doing a bit of that. Mm-hmm. But what I want to do, and you touched on it earlier, is it's, it's quite easy for these YouTube channels to become a bit me, 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 me. Uh, yeah. And I'm not a – I hope it hasn't seemed like that on this podcast. I've, my job is to talk about myself because we're on a podcast, but I'm not a very me, 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 me person. So I've got some ideas for next year. I might even start it this year to – make my channel more about bringing other people on mm-hmm. not like i think i'm in that power but you know just riding with cool people and making yeah, yeah. this a, making this a reason to go ride with cool people as opposed to hey look my name's ollie and i'm riding bikes again so yeah uh 
I had a little thing. I was looking through my own channel thinking this is getting very me, 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 this. So I want to steer it away so it's not all about me. So if I can make that more official, it would give me a reason to do it. So uh no, yeah, I get you. I get yeah, you. Yeah. So I, I like doing the I like doing the meetups, you know, with with my clan over on on Patreon. I sort of your clan's wicked, mate. You've got a proper proper clan going on, haven't you? It's fantastic, mate. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. And and I and I feel incredibly humbled by the the level of support that, that people have shown me over there. Because effectively, over half my income every month is off of Patreon. You know, it's it's not a it's not a, a small amount. Pe- people I, I get a lot of support from people on Patreon and it's blown me away. But I feel like I feel like a not that I owe. I want. I want to give them something more back, something extra. You know, like they they get early, early access to content and stuff on there. But I try and do like we call them clan meetups. So we'll mm-hmm. again not I've not managed to do as many as I wanted this year. I think we've only done one or two this year. But we'll, we we do these meetups and everyone gets together and we've done like three or four now, and it's brilliant because there's. Like there's there's its own little community is all sort of grown up around that where yeah. there's all there's all these mostly fellas I'll say but there are some lassies that come as well but a, a lot of guys who who've been riding for years but they literally go their set route in their hometown they go to the same calf and home again and that's that's what they do they never ride with other people they've never been abroad they've never gone to other parts of the the country and all of a sudden once they come along to one of these meetups where you know you get together with loads of other bikers and have a few beers and have a laugh next thing you know they're all exchanging numbers and they've got their own little whatsapp groups together and they're like right i'm coming out i'll come and see you like and the next thing you know people are going to wales they're going to ireland i've got folk that all of a sudden have buggered off to Spain and across into Europe and it changes their lives, totally opens up the world to them. Is, and is that not, That's what it's all about though, isn't it? Mega, I, mean, I, think, I hope people never think that people like us that do this rubbish on YouTube, we're trying to embellish ourselves because mm. honestly, I couldn't give a fuck. It's all about <laughs> just trying to, it's just trying about like building, building the whole mm. bikery thing, isn't it? It's great. So that, that stuff, I mean, it, it warms the cockles, doesn't it? That sort of thing. But, it, it, yeah, you know, totally. Yeah. It totally yeah. does, doesn't it? Because it, it it is. I do find like the whole YouTube social media thing. You you do become a bit. I think you, you do become a bit of a narcissist, whether you you want to oh, or definitely. not. Definitely, definitely, yeah, do. yeah. When you're don't staring you? at yourself on screen all the time, aren't you? Totally. Oh, I don't look yeah, that yeah. good there. I need to make. Yeah, yeah. Of course you do. But so it's, like, that's I, part I, of the game. I, I want to try and give something. You know, I want to give something back. You know, you do <laughs> want. You do. You do want, I want to, to be innovative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want. You want there to be more to it, don't you? Yeah. 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 No, man, I completely agree with you. That's sorry, that sounded very. Yeah, no, I, I mean it. Yeah, I yeah, definitely. That's that's what I mean. That's why I've I've got an idea for a, an avenue for exactly what you were just saying. I mean, I'm not. I haven't got as big a following as you, but the same sort of deal where I can just use it as an excuse to get other people in touch with each other and blah 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 and all that sort of good stuff. Mm. What's then your we, sub then count we... at the moment? What's your on sub YouTube? count on, on YouTube? Yeah. Uh, oh, I honestly, put, I think it's about fifteen and a half. I think. Fifty and a half thousand. That, I mean, you know, the, the, you want, but, no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just thinking because that's you know that is not that is not an incon. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That is not a small amount. That's a that's a lot of people. You know, when you think about it, oh, I've only yeah, I've only yeah. got ten thousand subs. I've only, I get people going to. Yeah. I've only got eight thousand subs. I've only got twelve thousand subs. You're like that's fucking twelve thousand people yeah. that have made the decision to go click. You know, it's it's nuts, isn't it? Like it's when mental. I look and I've got seventy odd thousand. You're like. That's a great big stadium full it's a of lot, people. Mate. It's a lot, and especially because you know the bike, the bike world is is a yeah. very niche YouTube world, yeah. isn't it? And we're in yeah, the adventure, yeah. well, I'm in the adventure bike world, like through and through, which is very, very niche, you know. But yeah, yeah, mate, I'm always very humble when I see the figures. It's mm. uh, it's, it's mental. But what have you got yeah, planned? I, well, on, about me so far. what are you doing? I, tell I, tell I, your clan what you're up to. <laughs> I have big plans for this year, which just didn't come about. I got, I got not stung by the tax man, but because I don't know if you know, you, you'll probably know this. Um, and the way the t- way tax works, obviously, is you 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 work a year in lieu. So, yeah, last year was my first full year on accounts, um, going full time. So the accountant worked out the tax bill, boom, paid it, done. And I had a battle fund all saved ready for this year. And I'd planned, I'd planned to go to India for like maybe two weeks. And I planned oh, to do like a, a 10 day sort of almost 
not quite a sprint, well, it's going to be a sprint, but right across the state. But I was going to try and meet up with as many people as I could over there, you know, like do big days, cover two, 3,000 miles, just get across some states and then spend some time in another place and another big chunk across, just work my way right across to the West Coast. However, <clears throat> the, the the accountant then said, obviously you've got you've you've now got to pay as well as this year's tax bill, you've got to pay fifty percent of next year's now, mm. and then you'll have to pay the next fifty percent in June or July, whenever it was. And I was just like, what? Sorry, I didn't I didn't realize any of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that basically wiped out my battle fund. So <laughs> all all this year I've been like, have I got enough money to get fuel to go to you know to to go to Wales? And go and do this. Yeah, so yeah. this year, this year has been proper penny pinching. <clears throat> so yeah, as long as we don't get another massive tax bill, which I won't uh, for next year, then next year I I want at least I'm hopefully hopefully it's not it's not confirmed, but I'm hopefully returning to Morocco next year. So I'm really looking forward to that if it happens. Um, I want to try and do Ireland, get that in, and. Um, I really want to get to India, but obviously India is a much, much bigger, much bigger so trip. So many people have told me to go to India. So obviously I did the Nepal trip uh, yeah, and, that, and that video, that video hit the algorithms. I mean, it's like at 1.1 million or something ridiculous, but um, wow, lots of, lots of the people that watched it were Nepalese and Indian. And okay. I've got, I mean, I've lost track of the amount of comments that said you need to come to India. You need to come yeah. to India. You need to come to India. So, uh, and then if you look, there's a lot of like, there's even British people that do tours in India. You know, there's mm. there's lots of stuff. The Ryland looks cracking. It looks cracking. It looks amazing. So yeah, you need to get yourself there, mate. That'd be brilliant. I've, I've got the thing about, uh, I want to do it on a sports bike. I just, I just want to, I oh, want back to your roots. Yeah. I'm kind of, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the new GS. You? You're the new you GS is crazy stuff. Like even your little electric thing, a little electric thing. That's the wrong term. <laughs> the big electric thing you just did around the whole bloody country. Like I think, what's this guy doing? He's a nutter. But <laughs> I kind of, I don't, I don't like we just chatted about. I don't, I don't like being the same as everyone else. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm a, I'm a moto vlogger on YouTube, and we all do the same, the same old shit. You know, yeah, we, we yeah, all do yeah. the same old. You don't, but we all do the same bike <laughs> review do. vids. <laughs> yeah. you, 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 you don't, you don't do, you don't do like bike review, bike review, bike review, bike review, which a lot of the the channels do. And I, I, I was doing it for a while just because, well, we, we couldn't travel so much in in lockdown. But you you do the bike reviews because they get big views, you know, and and with the big views, you tend to get more subs with the bigger views. Yeah. But they bore the shit out of me. They they just they don't they don't do it for me. I'd I would rather oh, be right. doing something, you know, like going somewhere on a trip mm -hmm. or doing something. That's I'd exactly what do I said earlier, way. mate. Exactly what I said. I much prefer going on adventures because I mean yeah. that's a bit self fulfilling, isn't it? I've got like I said, I've got a bike being delivered. One of the bikes you've done. I don't want to give it away too much, but <laughs> the uh, it's the same thing. And I'm I'm really happy they've they've reached out and they want me to do it. That's great. But mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it's a fucking noise. <laughs> <laughs> like doing a bike review, it's uh, it's like doing kit reviews. It's not the most fun thing to film, is it? But I think the the key to it though is the key to it is making it unique for you, putting your stamp yeah. on it, you know. And yeah, yeah, I've got some ideas. I've got yeah. some ideas. I'm quite, I'm quite like an ambivalent uh, sort of. So that will come across in the video, but in a comical manner. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll, see. we'll see. You'll be the judge. You'll be the judge. You will you'll be the judge. Yeah. Well, mate, I, I hope, I hope you get a, a bit of a a kick in the arse in terms of subs and and followings and stuff from this because I'll I'll be shouting from the rooftops about it. Uh, thanks, it's, mate. But like I said, but generally, I'm not that bothered. But I, I mean, I really appreciate it. But like, I'm not like, no I'm not, like angling at it too much. But yeah, it's cool. I really. The gesture goes, you know, goes a long way. I really appreciate it. No worries. It's it's weird for me because the like the teapot channel is doing well, and then the the podcast YouTube channel. I think it's only I think it's like two thousand subs or something. Yeah, it's, that's it's, what I noticed, not, mate. Which I found was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it, and they'll like a, a video will get five hundred views, six hundred views sometimes. Whereas the podcast, the podcast is gets like ten to fifteen thousand uh, a, a month. Yeah. You know, it's in, it's like in the top five percent globally. It's ridiculous. But hey, that's crazy. Do you release yeah. this as a podcast as well? I'm assuming it's actually on as a podcast, is it? Yeah, the, yeah. the audio version goes live every Wednesday and then the I video should probably know this, shouldn't I? I should probably <laughs> do my research. So I don't worry. And then the video <laughs> the video version 
that will go live the following Monday on the YouTube channel. So okay. it's, it's, it's always audio, video, audio, video, it just yeah. rotates around like that. Yeah. But it, yeah, it's weird how it's weird how it doesn't correlate. But I, I had to split them because the, the podcast was really hurting the big main channel because, you know, the, the videos were like two, three hours long and there was only four or five hundred people watching them. Mm hmm. And even if they only, you know, even if they, what I'm saying, even if they watch for 20 minutes or half an hour, that's massive for YouTube. That's huge. But it's a small yeah. percentage because the video is like, if it's a three hour, massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it's, it's small viewer attention, small figures. And it was just hammering the big channel. So I had to split them in the end, sadly. But um, I enjoy doing it. I really enjoy doing the podcast. Obviously, I've, I've got verbal. Well, it's diary. great because we get to chat. Like chat. we've never met. This is the first time we've ever met. So we get <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Have a, just have a little chat, which is great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, well, you just... I didn't think in lockdown. I did think about doing podcast stuff, mm -hmm. and then uh, I just didn't. And it's probably a mistake. Probably should have done because they seem to be very popular. But but like <laughs> I said, going back to what we said, it's it's more work, isn't it? It's more. It people is. Don't, it's a lot of work. This is a lot of work. So fair it... play to you. Cheers to. Cheers to Teapot One, Bruce. Slash, all this no worries. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is more work, but um, I, I, I just enjoy I enjoy this. In fact, I, I'd probably go to say I enjoy this more than like some some of the some of the other YouTube stuff I do. I, yeah. I really enjoy the trips. I love doing the trips, and I've I've got lo I've done loads of trips now that I've I've got about eight months worth of content still to edit. So I've I'm basically till next year I'm just housebound, just sat every day editing, 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 mm -hmm. trying to churn out trip after trip after trip. People will be sick of them, I think. <laughs> but oh, mate, I'm I'm the same. It, it, it get it gets stressful in the fact that you think oh, I need to get this stuff out. Like yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the same. I could I could list you like ten things now that I've got in edit that yeah. I just need to get finished. <laughs> yeah. And as you said, once you start once you start getting like sponsors or or like provided kit, you know, people give you kit on the provision that you do a video on it, all this sort of stuff. Once you start uh -huh. having that, it's extra pressure, isn't it? And it's always yeah, in your yeah. mind like, oh shit, I've got to do that video. I've got to do that video. And you always get people when you, if you do a vid, like if, if I do a sponsored vid, then you'll always get some arsehole that will put in the comment advert. And you're just like, yeah. And there's one you know, guy, there's one guy and I don't want to mention his name because it gives him a credit when it's, you shouldn't have any credit, but there's one guy on Facebook who is that guy. And he, it, it it makes me laugh. His his uh his anti. It's like he just doesn't get it. Just doesn't get it. Like uh, well, why should we trust what you're saying? Because you've got that stuff for free. Yes, mate. But I also spent two days filming a video, two yeah, weeks editing yeah. a video. Yeah. So you know, there's work that goes into it, buddy. You don't just get stuff for free. But uh, and I've given you an honest opinion. But anyway, whatever. Uh, there's some people that just like to. Want to watch it's the world in, burn, Bruce? They just want to watch it burn. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insulting, though, isn't it? Because yeah. I'm like, the only thing I've got in life is my integrity. It's it's the only thing, and it's <laughs> it's, the, it's the one thing that I will protect, like hook, line, and nail. I'll protect my integrity with it. So if I think some something's shit, I'm going to say it's shit, and I have done to the detriment. You know, you do it to the detriment of of the channel really because yeah. i know i've annoyed some pr companies and that's it once you've once you've annoyed one of the companies you're blacklisted and it's you if you can say that anymore well, and i've not got to those dizzy heights but yeah <laughs> it's, it's, i'm sure i'm sure it's a super game i just don't engage because i can't be bothered but um, yeah, i yeah. find it funny actually I, I like the negativity it just makes me laugh but yeah i get it but no, i meant I, to ask you do you do you track i've just i keep looking at my track but do you track do you ride track uh i do but i don't have a track bike i just i just uh, take the right. gs on it and just yeah yeah i've seen you on the gs now i didn't know if you rode track bikes that was all i, I would well, love you... to but i i can't i can't afford a track bike but um yeah i do enjoy the track stuff yeah for sure yeah, yeah. you should get into that you'd enjoy it it's great i love it <laughs> man that is just that is just a money pit <laughs> i mean it's expensive it's expensive so anyone who wants to track bike i'm looking directly at the camera here uh it is i reckon four to five hundred pounds a day in the uk now it never used to be when i used to track mm -hmm. when i was a lot younger it was cheaper whereas i mean if it's more expensive but yeah every day i did this year was at least 400 pounds if not 500 when you include fuel to get there fuel for the yeah. bike ticket yeah. food blah, 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 all everything about do you, yeah, do you run the slicks? Slicks? no so the um 
I've got they're up on the wall. I, I keep looking at them. I'm sorry that your camera can't see. They're just there. But no, I've got um, they're they're sort of mini treaded. They're, well, they're Conti race attacks. If anyone knows what they are, oh, yeah, they yeah. Mm-hmm. Bike, but um, they're good. And I've got a set of wets on wheels as well, so full wets, which are Michelin reins. But um, uh, the, the tires last quite a long time, to be honest. If you're not racing, mm-hmm. if you're racing, you'd get rid of them, wouldn't you? But um, yeah. Like, yeah. that's why you get scrub tires all the time. But I'm not racing. I'm just going around trying to get my knee down and feel like I'm really cool. So <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah. I've, I've just done um, with California Superbikes. Have you ever done that California Superbikes? No, no, I know of them. No, I don't. I don't tend to ride with a lot of companies. I probably should. I mean, you probably get loads of offers, mate. But I don't. Not. I'm not I, angling for. But like, I don't do that sort I, of stuff. I, just I was just going to say because I've yeah. I've done I've done the four levels. Well, you can do as many level fours as you want. You know, level yeah. four is like a really bespoke. They start tearing your riding down and breaking it right down in various elements but levels one two three you do one then two then three and then up into four and that's it so I've, i'm at level four now but um they're always i get on really well with them and they're always asking you know who who should we contact so you know again we can have a chat after this and if you're up for it i can i can hey, mate, i'm always forward. up for it but i don't want cool. it to come across that that's what i'm trying to get out of no this. no I'm no 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 don't, chat, don't worry yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm just here I'm, to drink beer and have a chat. That's that's good enough for me. Like nothing needs to come of it, but I'll always say yes. Yeah, no worries at all. Right? Okay, no worries. We'll sort that. And there's a couple of other things that I'll I'll chat to you about afterwards. Um, yeah, I've I've done levels three and four at California uh, this year at Cadwell, so I've still got to edit them. But I was the same. I, I, I was showboating all the time, like, because I could put my knee down. So I'll put my knee down, like, every bend. I'll go, right. yeah. And I'm on the tractor. <laughs> I'm on the GS. And you're like, yeah, look at this. Uh, but you're slow putting your knee down, yeah, you know, unless yeah. you're going, unless you're going so fast and leaning over so far that your knee, your knee touches down. I wasn't. I was just hanging off and putting my knee down. So you it's end up so going a lot funny, slower. Mate. You're not the only <laughs> you know? one, though. You're not the only one. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm all right on the track bike. You know, I'm, I'm like high inters or mm. early fast sort of pace so yeah. i'm not, by no yeah. means a hero but i'm not slow it's funny because you exactly that's exactly what i did when i first started you just want to get your knee down all the time so you can say you got knee down. Yeah. but then where i am yeah. now knee down is just an indication that you're at the right speed for the corner so you're not yeah. really trying to get your knee down but yeah it's, it's funny because i whenever i speak to people who've just done track days oh yeah i've got my knee down yes yeah. it puts a smile on my face <laughs> not from a like oh no, like it's just from a, i remember when i was back there and that's what you want to do you want to get your knee down yeah. all the time yeah yeah but i love it now it, it's a, and i've realized going back to tracking so for people listening so i used to track years ago i've got back into it recently and having ridden dirt for five years my tracking is much better now because mm. um especially like it rained the other day when i was at donington at donington park and you know you're used to bikes moving around moving so, around so when my little CBR six was, and it's an ex Paget's Honda race bike, you know, so it's fully, fully done up, but it was, it was giving it big licks because the tires were cold and, you know, I'm not the most talented, but it didn't bother, didn't phase me. I, I probably yeah. got, there was a lot of luck involved. I should imagine why I didn't come <laughs> off, but because this thing was always chucking me around in the dirt, you sort of get used to it. So yeah. Yeah. Biking. You've got, you've just got to do all the bike, haven't you, Bruce? You've got to do all the biking. <laughs> Every it, single it, discipline. Yeah. It, it's true though, isn't it? I mean, and then yeah. there's a reason that all the moto, like the moto GP and world superbike guys, when they're training, they're off roading, aren't they? They're, yeah, yeah. They're, they're and you always hear the commentator. The, yeah. the commentator always says, "Oh, you can tell that he right, he's been riding off dirt yeah. for the season. You can just tell by how they're riding." Yeah, yeah. Which weird though. See, when I when I used to ride the Jixar, I used to love. I used to, I used to ride way quicker than I do now, and I used to ride too too quick on the road. Like I look back. And wonder how I'm not I'm not dead to be because it was just ridiculous, you know, maxing out a <laughs> <laughs> maxing out a Jixar on on public roads is not a good idea. But that's what like no. me and some of my mates used to be do, do we've, all we've the time. There, it's crazy, there, isn't yeah. it? It's 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 idiocy. <clears throat> and now I'm the polar opposite. Now I'm much, much more reserved. But I used to love the jigsaw moving round under, you know, I used to love that sensation of the bike moving. And now, yeah. now it scares the shit out of me. The second I feel a bike moving <laughs> underneath me, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I am taking you off riding, off riding in the dirt. I'm taking Every, you. Everyone says yeah, this to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You'd love it, mate. Yeah. Were you, uh, were you a Met? Um, Copper biker. I don't know what the, the actual term for it was. I had I had just I had just done my course for um I used to work in diplomatic protection. So you're on the I SO just, crowd, 
Uh, yeah, I was SO, yeah. but I wasn't. I wasn't SEG. SEG is like a separate uh-huh. department themselves. I was the you know the ones that used to stand outside like Downing Street and Houses of Parliament and any any yeah. copper with a gun in uniform that stood outside an embassy or consulate and that's that's what I used to do. Yeah. So, but we also had a bike wing. So we we used to be armed riding around London answering alarm calls within the diplomatic. Um, community oh, sounds, sounds great. Oh, it's, to me, it's great. Yeah. It's awesome. Awesome job. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, Gucci. Yeah. Sat drinking coffee in Mayfair. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I I just done the the bike course for that. Literally, I finished on the Friday, turned up for work on the Monday, and got served the notice to say you're being investigated. And it was just like, <sighs> so I never got to ride the bike in anger. So I was just oh, like, I can gutted. I will. Never mind. I got the course, so <laughs> yeah, so lovely. Took a few things, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, dude, that's quarter past. Well, what are we quarter past nine? Quarter past nine now, mate. Yeah, I feel like we might be boring your listeners now. We're just talking about <laughs> random stuff. Aren't we? it's just, it's just two blokes in the pub talking shit. Now, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it? just what it's turned into, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to you want to cover? If you want to give a shout out about anything, if there's anything in particular you want to chat about. Do I want to give a shout out? No, I've not got anything I can think of, really. I should probably have people to shout. I can chat with a load of different people, but no, um, no, mate, no, I've really enjoyed This has been really good fun, mate. I've really enjoyed this. Me too. The channel is cracking. The podcast is amazing. It's really good. I've watched a few of them, but um, yeah, no, mate, it's been good. Thanks for having me on, by the way. I mean, I didn't reach out to you. You reached out to me, which is a bit odd, but that was great. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Absolute nice pleasure. Chat. Genuinely, Ollie, it's an absolute pleasure. And folks, yeah. please check out, check out Full HD. Well, check out his channel, but oh, for sure, oh. check out Full yeah. I've just lost an ear. Um, for, for sure, check out that Full HD podcast because it's a eh, playlist because it's it's mega. Really, really is good. Um, Dude. Thank you so much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for having me, mate. Genuinely, I mean that. Thanks for having me. It's been cracking. I've got for absolute a, pleasure. A I've got a beer left, so I can sit and drink that in my own time. But yeah, really. Yeah. yeah, I've just I've just started my last one too. <laughs> Folks, I will leave all the links for for all his channel uh, channel and socials. I'll leave all the links down below. So make sure you check them out. Give them a subscribe. Give them a follow, a like, a share. If you enjoy what you see, make sure you tell all your mates about it. Uh, and last thing, folks, hope you've enjoyed this one. Keep doing your thing. Get on out there whenever you possibly can. Look after those that you love. But most importantly, most importantly, live your life. Woo-ha! Well said, my man. Thanks, buddy. Just dude. No worries at all. <laughs>